and they have won the toss and elected to defer, but if I'm Coach Kevin Higgins and I'm Lehigh with that passing attack, I'd love to get the ball first. I think you go ahead and try and establish something if you're Lehigh right away. You have to like the way that they're throwing the ball. On the ground, they haven't been that strong, but you look for Abdullah, he can do the job when he has to for Lehigh. And again, he has been bothered this week and last week with a sprained ankle. He was listed as questionable, but he will play. Rafael Stillings has been bothered with a hamstring injury. He practiced this week, but again, both of them a little banged up, but uh, certainly not enough to keep either one of them out of this most important Patriot League game of the 1994 season. Glad you're with us. The Bison will be kicking off. The engineers will be receiving, and as we look, Lehigh with a very familiar name, at least to Central Pennsylvanians. That's Brian Klingerman, averaging 16 and a half yards a return. He has been a guy that has been in the lineup for them as a return man throughout his career at Lehigh, but now as a junior has moved in to be their top wide receiver. Klingerman's been a guy that he's been the go-to guy for Lehigh all season long. Obviously, 43 catches this year. That's an awful lot in, in uh, six games so far. He's really done the job for them. They'll look for him all day long. Aylesworth has really established a good set up with him as, as far as a good connection between quarterback and receiver. You always look for those, and Ellsworth and Klingerman obviously have that connection. Also look for Lafere today on offense. He can be a weapon when they need him. Lehigh has deployed some new players deep. It's going to be Willie Davis and Tahir Rivers back to return kicks. Klingerman and Abdullah normally the return men, but they are not back there right now. Miller is going to tee the ball up at the 35-yard line. Davis this season has four kick returns for an average of 11 and a half yards, and uh, it's the first time this season we have seen Rivers go back for Lehigh. He has yet to return a kick, so it, the engineers quite possibly trying to shake something up fairly early in the game by deploying some different guys back as the return men for Lehigh. Bucknell in the white helmets, white jerseys and blue numbers, blue trousers, Lehigh in the gold helmets and gold pants, and the brown jerseys. What is beautiful for college football. The winner of this one will have the inside track in the Patriot League. Miller runs up, kicks the ball. It's a high end over end kick, and it's going to go into the end zone, and it'll land halfway into the end zone, and Lehigh left it down it there. Rich Miller's best kick of the season, five yards deep in the end zone, and it appeared that Rivers had lost the ball in the sun because he didn't catch it on the fly. It bounced about two yards away from him, and Lehigh, is, if they're going to score on their first drive, is going to have to go 80 yards as they'll take over on the 20-yard line. Checking Lehigh offensively, Bob Aylesworth will be at quarterback. He's completed 63% of his passes for nearly 300 yards a game. They're going to send Streeter to the left side. To the right side, it'll be Klingerman. Backs are in an eye. Mastro Piero is in front of, it looks like, Abdullah in the backfield. Aylesworth will play fake to Abdullah, roll right side, dump it underneath to the tight end. Lafere makes the catch. Jackson hits him but can't bring him down. Strohacker finishes him off to make the tackle, but it's a pickup of six. They throw underneath to the tight end. Lafere, his 31st catch of the season. So it is now second and four coming up for Lehigh. Powers, Yates, Bauer, Slomko, and Gormsman. The offensive line for the engineers. Powers, a returning starter, Fifth-year player on this team was all Patriot League a year ago. Second down and four for the engineers. Aylesworth will toss it to the right side, carrying the ball that time is Stillings. He'll be very close to a first down. In fact, they're going to mark him inches short. It'll be third down and less than a yard. In fact, they may even measure, but it looks like the ball did not reach the 30-yard line, so that shouldn't be a first down. The chains were a little bit over-exuberant on the far side of the field. They thought it was a first down and started to move, but it is not. And now they're going to ask for a measurement. But Chris with the nose of the football, short of the 30. I don't see how they give him a first down. Bucknell defense has Ed Berman at defensive end along with Bernard Perry. John Castiglia and Jeremy Patty are the tackles. The linebackers, Welty Strohecker, and I believe it is Bird that is out there. And Jackson, Henry, Miller, and Crudup are in the secondary. To Lehigh's credit, I have to say that I think Stillings was over the 30-yard line. I'm surprised when he was finally brought down, that is. I'm surprised that uh, they got their spot. It's not a very good one. It will be third and inches. But again, when you line the ball up directly on the 20, you really don't even need to measure. You just need to look to get to the stripe. And if it didn't get to the stripe, it's not a first down. And it didn't get to the stripe. Kevin Higgins and Lehigh's coaching staff are arguing. And I don't see how they can argue the measurement. They could be arguing the spot down there. I think that's what it has to be. They're just wasting time right now by even measuring this on the near side. Ball will be on the right hash mark, third and inches. Bucknell has been a very good short yardage defensive team this year. They have stopped three fourth and ones. Last week, I think, was the first week they didn't stop a fourth and one, Chris. 
Well, you think back, they've had a couple of real big ones. They had one against Princeton that came up big in the first half. They ended up losing that ball game, but that very well could have been the difference. And Harvard and also Towson State tried fourth and one and didn't get it. This is just maybe the length of your fingernail. I would expect maybe to see Bob Aylesworth on a quarterback sneak here because it is that close. If center Chris Bauer at six foot 251 could do anything, they should have the first down. They'll operate with double tight ends, backs in an eye. Aylesworth looking over a six-man front for Bucknell. Aylesworth on a long count. He's going to hand it off to the fullback, and Mastro Piero will get it on second effort. Russ Strohecker had him stopped in the backfield, but he slipped off a of Russ and then went over the left side and picked up two yards to the 32. Credit Mastro Piero for the second effort on getting the first down. He got hit up high by Strohecker. Russ didn't have a real good angle at him when he knifed through that hole to get into the backfield, but a good job by Mastro Piero on the second effort to get the first down. Mastro Piero only averaging 3.7 yards a carry. Hasn't rushed the ball much out of the fullback spot. Lehigh now in an offset eye. Bucknell in a four-man front. First and ten engineers on the first first down of the game. They're at the 32 their own. And jumping off sides for Lehigh is the tight end Mark Lafere. So now they'll have to look at a first and 15. A lot of yellow on the field. Everybody in the house saw that one. And Lafere was just on the first snap count. And the rest of the Lehigh team on the next one. So instead of first and 10, it's now first and 15. The ball back to the 27-yard line. Lehigh this season averaging 307 yards in the air. That compares to 325 a year ago. They're rushing the ball for 120 yards a game. Last year, they rushed for only 99 yards a contest. First and 15, Aylesworth on a quick count. Throws it out in the flat, making the catch. Mastro Piero at the 28, fights his way forward to the 35, 36-yard line. Bird, along with Feely, knock him out of bounds. And it'll be a pickup of about seven on the play. And Lehigh will have a second down coming up and seven or so to go for the first down. Very nice design screen by the Lehigh offense. On that play, Ellsworth had his option of, of either Mastro Piero or Stillings. They both went to opposite sides. Both were open. Mastro Piero with a bigger lane to run to. Streeter to the left side, Klingerman to the right. The backs are in an eye this time. The tight end, Lafere, on the right side. Bucknell now in a five-man front as Bird show cheats up to the line. And Lehigh will run a quick hitter to the fullback. It'll gain a couple at best, making the tackle for the Bison that time. Jeremy Patty, the defensive tackle. But Lehigh will have a third and long, third and five, coming up on this play. Engineers are going to shuttle in another wide receiver, Tim Kennedy, who last week caught a 54-yard pass for a touchdown against New Hampshire. And coming out of the game will be Stilling. So Lehigh will go with the three wide receivers set and Mastro Piero, the lone back in the backfield. Two receivers to the right, the wide side, one to the left. Bucknell with a four-man front. Third and five for the Engineers. Aylesworth on a straight drop, slips as he goes back, throws it right side, making the catch short of the first down is Kennedy. And I think it'll be a fourth and one coming up. Kennedy did a poor job that time of coming to the first down marker, and I think they'll be just short. Kennedy's job on that pattern, Bob, is to get to the first down marker and then turn around. He did that, but he came up in a hook pattern past the first down marker behind it. He's got to stay in front of it waiting for that pass. Also, Ellsworth took a little bit too long. If Bucknell is not giving some cushion on that side with the coverage, that could easily be picked off for a touchdown to go back the other way for six. Aylesworth also had trouble with his footing in the backfield, kind of slipped before he got ready to throw. Referees did a pretty good job of spotting the ball. It'll be close. They'll bring the chains across right in front of the Lehigh bench, and it is going to be a first down. They must have got it by the nose of the football. I thought they were going to be short when they they brought the sticks over, but uh, again, just barely a first down, and really, Lehigh almost blew themselves a chance on this drive because they should have had the first down by quite a bit. I'm not a guy who usually questions officials, but we've had two rather questionable spots so far today, Bob. That one to me looked like a fairly decent spot. Maybe my angle looking across thought maybe they had him stopped for the short of the first down, but they did not. Streeter to the left, Klingerman to the right. Tight end Lafere on the right. The backs are in an eye, both behind Aylesworth. And it's a play fake to the tailback. Aylesworth sets up and now will be sacked. Coming in for the sack is Ed Berman. Berman now with five and a half sacks on the season. He has probably been Bucknell's best pass rusher of the front four. You look at Bucknell, they rush the ball very well, obviously. Tops in the Patriot League. That sets up the play fake, Bob. If you're, Luff, or if you're Lehigh here, you're not going to have always a good play fake setup because you don't run the ball a lot. 
you have to sell the play fake by running the football a lot, not, something that Lehigh does not do. Berman not fooled. 11.55 to go in the quarter. Lehigh on the first possession of the game. They'll operate out of the shotgun on second down and 14 after the four-yard loss. Aylesworth has all day, throws down the middle. Streeter makes the catch. Welty and David Todd make the tackle immediately. It'll be a pickup of six or seven, but they're still going to have a third and long. Third and about six or seven more to go for the first down. The engineers have caught the ball a couple of times today, Chris, in front of the Bucknell secondary, but they really haven't been able to get anybody deep yet today. I think you have to credit the linebacking core for that, Bob. They read the pass very well and dropped back into coverage. As you mentioned, the names you heard, Welty and Strickland back in coverage. Aylesworth four for four this afternoon for 24 yards. Bucknell with a five-man front. It's now third down and a long seven. Aylesworth on a straight drop, being chased by Berman, dumps it out in the flat. Mastro Piero on the sidelines and get the 40-yard line by Rob Bird, the safety valve used to perfection. Bird or someone was very late getting over there, and it resulted in the big play for a first down. Bird stayed home in the center of the field, waiting for Master Pierre to make a move. When he broke to the outside, Bird should have been over there with him. He wasn't over far enough, so they could have shut down that play before he got the first down. 16 yards on the pickup. Lehigh on the move. First and 10 at the Bucknell 40. Backs in an offset eye. Mastro Piero over to the left side a little bit. The lone back appears to be Stillings. Aylesworth sprints out to the left. Has time. Dumps it out in the flat. Mastro Piero catches it at the 35. Goes down the sidelines. And it'll be bumped out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. A gain of 19 on the play to Mastro Piero. He has picked up 35 yards on consecutive swing passes, and the Bison don't have a clue on the last two plays where he is. Aylesworth on that play, Bob, just faked like he was going to tuck it away momentarily. That bit the Bucknell defense to come up and let Mastro Piero get open in the flat. He just dumped it over the Bucknell linebacker's head. Big pickup for Lehigh. First and 10 for the Engineers as the ball marked at the 22 of Bucknell. Streeter in motion from left to right. Klingerman and Streeter both line up on the right side. Lehigh with some problems getting set. Bucknell showing blitz on first and 10. Lehigh goes to the run. Stillings breaks the initial tackler, gets inside the 20 to the 18. Charles Crudup on the stop, a gain of four on the play. Second and six coming up for Lehigh. Engineers penetrating the red zone here. They have scored touchdowns 70% of the time. That's their highest mark in three years. They have scored a field goal 5% of the time and only in one out of four chances, a percentage five times in 20 has Lehigh been turned away totally. Second down and seven, the ball at the 19 as they marked Stillings' knee down there then. Aylesworth, a roll out to the right side, sets up, throws back across the field to the left, and the big receiver will pull it in for a touchdown. They went man for man on front up and the tight end, LaFear, will pull it down. Lehigh will get called for a celebration penalty, so they'll have to kick off from the 20, but they're on the board for the score, a 19-yard pass, and Lehigh leads it 6 to nothing. Wasn't even designed for that, Bob. The primary receiver was supposed to be Master Piero coming out of the backfield. He tripped once he got past the offensive line and was down on the ground in the middle of the field right over the seam. That forced Aylesworth to look the other way, and there was LaFear in one-on-one -on -one coverage. I told you LaFear can be a pretty tight offensive weapon is a good tight end for Lehigh. They matched the 6-6. LaFear up against the 5-9 Crudup, and it was like lobbing the ball down on the block to Abdul Jabbar being guarded by Spud Webb. 12 plays, 80 yards, took 4 minutes and 41 seconds. And on for the extra point is Mike Swartz, who this season is 18 out of 19. Swartz handled only the kickoff duties last year, but this year handles all of the duties. The touchdown will be good. The penalty will be the dead ball and sportsmanlike against Lehigh. And that means Bucknell should end up with their first drive beginning in pretty good field position because Lehigh will have to kick off from the 20 yard line on the 15 yard penalty. So Lehigh able to score first and Chris, they did it with a lot of short passing. Well, it's something that we expected Lehigh to do. They got the backs involved in Mastro Piero catching a couple of passes out of the backfield. And Lafear, the tight end, catching balls in the flat that time. One-on-one -on -one coverage, not much of a challenge. Swartz on for the extra point. Petulo to hold. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. So Lehigh will score first and lead 7-0. We've got a break in the action. Lehigh 7, Bucknell nothing. You're listening to Bison Football on the Bison Sports Network.
Transit is proud to be the official carrier of Bucknell's athletic team. And they like to transport your group, too. They bust the bison in modern, comfortable motor coaches to the away games. You can take your group wherever you want to go. Susquehanna Transit also has tours available on a per-person basis. Travel with them to Branson, Missouri, Myrtle Beach, Orlando, Atlantic City, and more. Call Susquehanna Transit at 800-692-6314 for a complete list of destinations and dates. Susquehanna Transit, the official carrier of the bison. The Alexander Family Dealerships proudly announced the addition of Aubrey Alexander Toyota in Stevens Grove. Tom Alexander and Jim Canals welcome all the past customers of Valley Toyota. We have truckloads of new Toyotas arriving daily, so don't delay. Hurry in, test drive a new Toyota now, and save at the... Lehigh on the board first. They lead it 7 nothing on a 19-yard pass play to LaFere, the tight end from Aylesworth. And what a first drive for Aylesworth. 7 for 7 for 78 yards. No surprise that Lehigh was going to put the ball in the air. They've been very successful at it. Going to the short passes, the backs out of the backfield, and the tight end, the big guys on that drive for Lehigh. Surprising that we didn't hear more from Klingerman on the first drive. Maybe using him as a decoy. Parham near side, White far side, standing on the 15 as Lehigh kicks from the 20. Swartz kick high end over end. White is going to have to go back inside the 10 at the 8. Two great kicks today. White across the 15 to the 20 to the right side to the 30. It's out to about the 35-yard line, and Bucknell will start it in pretty decent field position for quarterback Rob Gluss, who has competed, completed 57% of his passes for an average of 151 yards a game, 10 touchdowns to three interceptions. McHugh will be the fullback. He's averaging four yards a carry. Rich Lemon, 840 yards for the season, 140 a game, five and a half a carry, and seven touchdowns. They'll be your backfield. McHugh will line up in the slot this time. Mike Phillips and Steve Noteboom wide to the left side. The tight end, Mark Gentili on the right. Gay Donkers, Petras, DeFalco, and Fratterelli, the horses up front. We'll take a look at the Lehigh defense after this play. First and 10, Bucknell from their own 35. They get the football here, trailing at 7-0, and that may not be such a bad statistic because the team that has scored first in the first six games of the Bucknell season has won only one time. First and 10, Bison. Lehigh with a five-man front. Gluss will play fake to Lemon. He's going to roll to his left and look to throw. Gluss now tucks the ball under his left shoulder, and it will nail back at the 28-yard line on the stop for Lehigh, Rich Owens, and that is his fifth tackle for a loss this season. Gluss had the ball in the left hand, really didn't have any intention of passing that time, and the Bison will lose seven on their first play from scrimmage. you got to wonder about the condition of the field right now. It's got to be pretty slippery because we've seen guys losing their footing. Gluss rolled out to the left side that time, had a blocker in front of him in DeFalco, but he slipped and fell to the ground. That's why he got nailed for the loss. Lehigh's front four, Moore and Lawler returning starters, a pair of seniors. Dina, a senior, Owens, a senior on the other side. Lemon tries to run the right side, and Lemon will lose four more back to the 24-yard line, and the Bison offense is in reverse. We'll now have a huge third down, third and about 10, uh, excuse me, 20 to go for a first down. This season, the Bison only 30% on third downs, 22 of 74. Lehigh on their first drive of the ball game was a perfect three for three, and this time they have exactly third and 20 to go for a first down. Nine minutes to go in the quarter, Lehigh seven nothing. They scored on the initial possession. The Bison have done nothing so far on their first two plays. Gluss on a straight drop, four-man rush, has time, throws it underneath. Noteboom makes the catch, but you might as well dive it in the line if you're going to run a crossing pattern for three yards. And the Bison are going to have to send the punting team on as a Lehigh defense right there to stick with Noteboom coming across the middle. Not what Bucknell wanted to do right off the bat, Bob. Go three and out on the first series and lose 10 yards in the process. You get this crowd into it a little bit. It's a pretty good crowd on Parents Weekend here. I want to give Lehigh any momentum. Good crowd on the Bucknell side as well. Miller will punt Klingerman to return, and it's a low line driving kick, and it's going to take a very good roll for Miller, and Klingerman will run back and pick it up on the 10. Make the first man miss him, cut up the middle, the 15 to the 20, still going, and Wally Hurdley will finally bring him down at the 22. A return of 12 for Klingerman. He realized that Miller had outkicked his coverage and picked it up on the 10, so Lehigh wouldn't lose any more yardage, and it turned out to be a great play. Credit Miller with a very good punt. The low line draft took off over Klingerman's head, but Credit Klingerman on the return. He had no blockers in front of him. He just made John Caldwell miss. If he had gotten hit, he probably would have been sent back all the way to the field house the way Caldwell was coming at him. 
63 yards on the punt, second longest of the year for Miller. His previous high was 70 yards. Lehigh will start their second possession at the 23. They're only have a first and 10. Very important defensive series for the Bison because Lehigh marched the first one down, look, made it look very, very easy. Aylesworth will hand off to the tailback. That is going to be Stillings. He'll go around right in, 25 out to about the 28-yard line, a pickup of five, second and five coming up. Stillings has been in there all the way. We have yet to see Abdullah today, so maybe Abdullah's ankle is still bothering him, and he is maybe not up to 100%. I think maybe that play might have been changed at the line of scrimmage, Bob. They were there for a long time, and as Ellsworth examined the Bucknell defense, he saw they were back ready for the pass already. They only had seven men in the box. Second down and five after the five-yard run. Klingerman to the left, Streeter to the right. Bucknell with a four-man front. One back in the backfield as Lehigh employs two tight ends. Aylesworth will play fake. He'll roll to the right side. Berman chases. He hits Aylesworth after the play, and they're going to call no roughing the passer. The pass intended for Lafere, and that was a good play by the Bison defensive end, Ed Berman. The official looked long and hard, but kept the yellow hanky in the pocket. Aylesworth will remember that one. Good job again by the Bison linebackers to get back in coverage. Both Welty and Bird were back to help out John Henry and Crudup. They're really doing a nice job in shutting down the passing game on the near side of the field. That was the first incompletion of the game for Aylesworth. It's third and five now for Lehigh. Eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Engineers seven to nothing. Aylesworth back to pass, has time, and now Aylesworth will be sacked. Coming in from the inside was one of the defensive tackles, and it may have been Jeremy Patty that got to him, kind of crawling along the ground and then knocking him over. One of the advantages, Bob, of having four defensive linemen who are of all quality is that if you, you won't get any double teams. You'll get man on man. A couple of the Bison were held up pretty good, but that all opens it up for the other guys, and Patty got back there. Good series for the Bison defense. It's now fourth and 11, and on to punt is Ben Talbot, number one in the Patriot League at 38.6 yards a kick. Mike Phillips in single safety, the 10 men at the line going for the block. Talbot gets the snap from center and kicks it. It's a high kick, not overly deep. It's going to bounce at the Bucknell 44. Phillips will pick it up on the bounce at the 34. Phillips comes across the 40 to about the 43. A return of nine and a punt of 43 that time for Ben Talbot. So that's about five yards better than his average. And the Bison will start in pretty good field position with drive number two. Early scores from the Patriot League. Colgate with a 14-0 lead over Fordham. That's with 6.15 left in the first quarter. Holy Cross and Lafayette will start at 1.30. And I had picked Fordham in my picks on Thursday. Gutsy call. But uh, so far, not a good one. First and 10. Colgate returning home this week for the first time in a month. So they're probably excited to be back in Hamilton, New York. First and 10, little counter to Lemon, and he's going to get nothing. Rich Owens is going to knock him back. And Lemon has carried the ball twice today, both for negative yardage. You have to credit the defensive front for Lehigh, Bob. They're really stacking up. They put eight in the box. They move the free safety or the strong safety up into that rover position to help out against the run. And coming up to help out was the strong safety on the tackle, Hector Mar or correction. Yeah, it was Hector Martinez, one of the corners who came up. Second down and 12 after the two-yard loss. It's back to the 41. Bison with three wide receivers, two to the left, one to the right. A five-man front now for the engineers. Wide splits. They look like they want to tee off on the pass rush. Gluss back to pass, throws it in a hurry. Down the seam. Noteboom catches it at the 35. He's going to sprint inside the 10 and be brought down by Jason Mack inside the 5 at the 3. That time, Lehigh has to look around at themselves and ask the question, who had Noteboom? I'll tell you what. If you're Bucknell and you see Noteboom lined up with a linebacker, Amon, you have to love the matchup. That's exactly what happened. They were mixed up in the pass coverage, Bob was the Lehigh defense. Amond ended up on Noteboom. Linebacker versus a wide receiver is a mismatch. Noteboom used his speed to get open, and that's what opened it up for that big play for the Bison. Having some technical difficulties here, and hopefully we'll be able to correct them. Plus, will hand it to Horst straight up the middle. Horst will plow his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Bob Horst with his third touchdown of the year. Straight ahead running right at the middle following center Gary Petras. And Lehigh now leads it by just a point, 7-6. to six. Big backfield set up with McHugh and Horst. McHugh leading the way. Horst at the tailback slot when they get inside the five-yard line. And it's worked out real well for the Bison this season. And Horst picks up the touchdown on the four-yard run. So now it is 7-6. Rich Miller is on for the extra point. He has made 19 out of 20. Gluss will hold and Herbert will snap. Owens for Lehigh has blocked two extra points this season and also blocked a field goal. And Miller's kick is up. It is good. 
We've got a break in the action with the score. Bucknell 7, Lehigh 7, the pass to note, boom, the big play. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. How are we bringing up? Okay. Is it the phone line? Do you think it's the phone line? Are we still bad? Do you want me to hang up? We want to hang up and call me right back? Okay. I'll keep the stopwatch going so I'll know when to start. Go. We're back here at Goodman Stadium at Lehigh. The score is 7-7. And Chris, as we were talking about wanting the over in this ball game, we expect a high-scoring game. And thus far, we've seen four drives. Two of them have ended in touchdowns. Miller will kick off. High end over end kick. It's going to go to Rivers at about the 3. Across the 10 to the 15, out to the 20. Brandon Little has a chance at him and misses him. And it's going to be worth about six more yards or so before Ed Jackson able to bring him down. So that's where Lehigh will start their third drive. Bison very successful on the last drive, Bob, because they did put that pressure on Ellsworth that they wanted to do today. They feel that if they get to him, they can make him, force him into some mistakes in this wide open offense where they like to throw the football a lot. Lehigh will start it at their own 27 yard line. First and 10. One receiver Klingham into the left, Streeter goes to the right side. Aylesworth is going to hand off on a counter to, that's Abdullah for the first carry. Abdullah across the 30 to the 31 will pick up a total of three or four yards on the play. A three-play, 57-yard drive for Bucknell that took just a minute. Again, the big pass to Steve Noteboom. Good blocking scheme on that counter that Lehigh ran. Eric Ekstrom, one of the line, or one of the wide receivers, came in and picked up a block on one of the defensive linemen. You have to credit him for helping out, opening up that hole. 7-7, seven, seven, Bucknell and Lehigh, five and a half minutes to go in this, the first quarter. Aylesworth brings him to the line. Second down and six coming up for the engineers. Aylesworth tosses left side to Abdullah. Has some decent blocking. A Abdullah trying to get around the end, but Patty grabs him by the shirt tail and pulls him down after a very short two-yard gain. And it'll now be a third down coming up and about four to go for a first down. Jeremy Patty, we've called his name a couple of times this afternoon. A sack and now that big play on a running play. And Lehigh will have a third down and a long four coming up right here. To the left side, it'll be Ekstrom. To the right side, Klingerman. Mastro Piero in the slot, and the lone back is probably Abdullah. Third down and four. Bucknell with a four-man front. Aylesworth hands off on the counter to Abdullah. Abdullah will not get the first down. He'll be stopped about a yard short, and Lehigh will have a decision at fourth and one on their own 36-yard line. The Bucknell linebackers stayed at home, and I think it was Welty and Stroecker that made the tackle. Bison defense has really scouted that counterplay very well. You can tell in the way they set up for it when they have the offset eye like they did there. The linebackers were not full, came up and helped shut down that play and close the holes after he tried to get to the first down marker. You know, from the angle we're at, I thought that they had stopped him at about the 36. The spot is past the 36, but they're still about a half yard short as they needed to get to the 37 for a first down. And Lehigh is going to send the punting team on for an apparent punt. Talbot last time had a 43-yard kick, and this will be the second drive in a row. It's been three and out if the Lehigh does indeed kick. Phillips back in single safety. Bucknell leaving their real defense on the field right now just in case Lehigh should try to fake the ball right here and try to go for the first down. But in a 7-7 ball game, they're on into the field. Even Lehigh, one of the most gambling teams, I don't think will try anything. Snap to Talbot. He's going to punt. Bucknell playing for the return. It's a high spiraling kick. Phillips is going to fumble the punt. 
Phillips couldn't get the handle on it, and I believe he's able to dive back on it. He'll lose about five to the 21. A flag is down, and maybe Lehigh didn't give him enough room to catch the football because Mike Phillips never put the hand up for the fair catch. I think that's got to be the call right now because he was right in his face. Bob Neller, one of the off, one of the uh, backup linebackers, was right there, right in his face, and I think that's exactly what the call's got to be, and that's what it is. So the Bison are going to get the ball back to where Phillips originally touched it at the 27 and then either get 5 or 15 yards. I think that they kind of just grazed him. It should be only the 5-yard penalty, and it will. It'll be the, the running into the punt returner as opposed to roughing the punt returner, which we've seen a couple of times. And uh, Bucknell will start at 1st and 10 just outside their own 32-yard line. So the Bison scored on their last possession. Rob Gluss today is 2 out of 2 for a total of 54 yards. 4.15 to go in the first quarter, 7-7 seven to seven the score. No boom to the right side, White to the left, the Baxter and I, McHugh in front of Lemon. Horse scored the touchdown on the three-yard run for the Bison. Glussel tossed to Lemon, has a McHugh block, trying to cut back at the hash mark. Lehigh pursues and nails him once again for a loss. He'll lose three, and Lemon now has not gained positive yardage now in three carries, three plays, three for a loss. And one would think maybe that a play fake to Lemon might go for big yardage because they are just cheating up and trying to stack him behind the line. Lehigh is doing a great job. They had the five-man front again. They're stringing out the play very well. A good job by John Slowick, the linebacker on the open field tackle on Lemon. He got some help, though, from his other linebackers. Second down and 13 to go for a first down. Lemon the lone back. Bucknell with three wide receivers. Four-man rush for the engineers. Gluss the little pass down the seam to Gentilly. Makes a catch at midfield and rumbles down the left hash mark inside the 30. Down to the 27, similar to the play against Harvard that went for touchdowns on the tackle for the Engineers was one of their safeties having to chase from behind, and that was uh, Jay LaRusso that made the tackle. Again, the Bison taking advantage of the linebacking core in coverage for Lehigh. Bob Neller, the man we talked about a moment ago on the punt return, was the one who was responsible for Gentilly, and Gentilly blew right past him. He had to get some help from the corner on the coverage. I may have said linebacker Jay LaRusso. It was actually cornerback Hector Martinez that had to come from the far side of the field to make the tackle. First and 10, Lehigh appears to be offsides. Lemon around the left end for his first positive yards, but it won't be five yards, so I'm sure Bucknell will take the penalty. Gloss's cadence, I believe, maybe drew off Rich Owens, one of the defensive ends for Lehigh. <laughs> it is going to be against the engineers. It'll be first and five coming up for the Bison because not only will we get the yardage, but they will get the down over. Again, we apologize. We believe, we believe we have some technical difficulties. And I'm not really quite sure what they are. We'll try to muddle through here and check them out at the next break. First and ten for the excuse me, first and five for the bison at the 23-yard line. They need to get to the 18 for the first down. Baxter and I. No boom to the left, Phillips to the right. It's going to be a handoff to Lemon. No, a play fake to Lemon and a throw to the left side, intending it for no boom at the two. Good coverage by Hector Martinez. The ball near the sideline thrown high. It's incomplete. That time the Lehigh defense lined up in a defense that was quite similar to the 46, Bob. They had, they stacked up the four linebackers, but they were kind of angled to the outside and they brought up the strong safety, guarding against the run. And again, the play fake, they had the good coverage. They had no boom one-on-one. -on -one. That's what Gluss was looking for with the play fake with Lemon, but they just couldn't complete the pass. Second down and five, three minutes and one second to go in the quarter. White to the right, note boom to the left. The back's in an eye behind Gluss. Five-man front this time for the engineers and flags fly. And I think somebody moved early because there were still four seconds left to go on the play clock. So the Bison are going to lose the five yards that they gained on the penalty. And no, they're going to say Lehigh is going to call a timeout. So there wasn't a penalty. Got a break in the action. Three minutes to go in the first quarter, 7-7. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Over 246 Joe. 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 Thank you very much. Joe. Joe, I, I don't know what's wrong. How, what does it sound like? 
Still breaking up now. Ready? Well, we're back here at Goodman Stadium. Bucknell will have a third down and about two coming up as Gluss on a quarterback sneak gets a couple of them. And we hope our signal is a little better now. We've had some problems with our signal here from Goodman Stadium, and we ask that our audience bear with us. Down under two and a half minutes to go in the quarter. 7-7, the score. Bucknell with a third and two from the 20. They need to get to the 18 for a first down. Two receivers to the left. Gloss will roll to the right side. Has Fenson out in the flat, but instead throws it down to Gentilly, who drops the ball at the goal line. Would have been a sure touchdown. Right on the numbers, plain and simple. E tight end. Bucknell has to be very happy, though. They had the opportunity because Gentilly, when he got down to the goal line, Bob, pushed off the quarterback, Mike, cornerback Mike Blunt, and he's very lucky that a flag did not go flying. That's why he was so open. 2.19 to go. Clock stopped on the incompletion. Rich Miller will be on for the field goal try. It'll be a 36-yard kick right in the middle of the field to try to give Bucknell a 10-7 lead. Miller's kick is up. Miller's kick is no good. It missed either wide right or just short, and the Bison turned a golden opportunity and let it slip right through the fingers. So the engineers will take over, first and 10 on their 20 on the missed field goal. Miller now on the season, two out of six on field goals. So the Bison have a chance, they get inside the 20, but don't score. And the engineers will put their offense back on the field with 2.14 to go now in the first quarter. Aylesworth brings them to the line. Klingerman to the right, Streeter to the left. Four-man front for Bucknell, backs in an eye. Play fake to Abdullah. Aylesworth rolls right, throws out into the flat. The tight end, Lafere makes the catch to 23. John Henry misses the initial tackle, and that's worth about four or five more yards for the Lehigh cause. Jeremy Patty and Rob Bird had to come back to make the final tackle, but it's an eight-yard gain, second and two coming up for Lehigh. Second time today we've seen that play from Lehigh. They ran it on the first very play of this game. They run the misdirection, trying to get everybody going one way, and they turn around and throw the tight end or the receiver in the flat. It's worked out very well for them twice. Clinger him into the left this time. Streeter to the right. Backs in an offset eye. Bucknell again in a four-man front on second down and two. Aylesworth on a long count. Hands it off to the tailback. That's Abdullah. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Andy Welty got him high. Jeremy Patty got him low. And the engineers now will have a third down and about four to go for a first down. Great surge by the Bison defensive line. Again, they tried to run the counter, but the Bison not fooled. Once again, that's the second time in a row they've shut the play down. This time for the loss, Bob. It was a good job to seal off the original hole so that he had to cut back. That gave the Bison extra time to get into the backfield and make the hit. Third to long three for Lehigh. Two to the left, one to the right. Only one back behind Aylesworth. Bucknell shows blitz and they will come. Aylesworth rushed, hit as he throws, and it's intercepted and dropped by David Todd. If Todd had picked it off at the 27, there was nothing but green grass in front of him. He would have had a touchdown. Instead, another three and out. Three consecutive drives now for Lehigh that the Bucknell defense is forced to punt without a first down. We haven't seen Bucknell blitz a lot this year, but when they have, it's been effective. Right there, they forced Aylesworth into a big mistake, and Bucknell very unhappy that they couldn't take advantage right there. Again, 10 men near the line. Phillips back in single safety, standing at the 35. 7-7 ball game. Talbot punts. It's a high tumbling kick. Phillips has to come up. He'll take it on the run at the 45. Come into Lehigh territory across midfield. He'll get to the 47 of the engineers, and Bucknell will have their best field position of the day. Only 29 yards on the punt that time for Talbot. Phillips had a lot of room to run there. He had a couple of good blocks set up early by Caldwell and also Brandon Little, who set it up for him initially. One of the top punt returners in the Patriot League. Second, as a matter of fact, 11.3 per return. Blockers and following his blockers is a big reason why for Mike Phillips. First and 10, Bucknell at the 47th lead. Set wide for Putnick to the left. The fullback slot. Lemon straight up the middle. 45-40 breaks into the secondary. Jukes a man. 30-20. 
10 down to the eight yard line. First and goal for the Bison on the eight. Rich Lemon that time with a 35, make it a 39 yard run that time from scrimmage. He had so many negative runs in a row, but it just shows you you can't bottle them up all afternoon. Gaping hole on the right side. Andy DeFalco, Ed Fratarelli, and Gary Petros opening up the hole that a truck could have driven through, Bob, and that's what opened it up for Rich Lemon to get in the secondary in a hurry. When he turns on the speed, nobody's going to catch him. Well, the truck didn't run through it, but a little Porsche did and ran for big yardage. First and 10 now at the Lehigh 8. Gloves hands off to Lemon, and Lemon this time will be met at the line of scrimmage by middle linebacker John Slowick. Maybe a yard that time for Lemon. Second and goal coming up from the seven. You know, something I've noticed about Bucknell every week, Bob, when they do their scouting, they usually take a play or two out of the playbook of the other team. Right there, they ran the counter. Try to get something going with Lemon. You get a misdirection going with Rich Lemon, and he steps one way, cuts back to the other. It can obviously add up to some big yardage, but it didn't that time. That'll be the end of the first quarter with a score. In return, Bucknell will have a second and goal at the Lehigh 8. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Any better, Joe? Joe? I can't even hear the commercial. Joe? Joe? See if we're still on the air, Heath. That's the number. Joe? Huh? Ask him if you can use a phone. Are we on the air or not? I'll watch the play, Bob. You go ahead. Thank you for using AT&T.
Thank you. Okay. Well, what do you want to do here? You ready? Or not? Sounds all right. Why don't we use it without it till the next time out? We'll see what it does. Well, no, you should. I mean, am I sound like Darth Vader now? Can you bring me up like this now? Huh? Well, you want to go back right again till the next? You have to come on. I can't hear anything. That's why I hung up. We're going back to game. Do it, and I'll start talking in a few seconds. Okay. About start talking after. Again on an eight-yard reverse to Troy White. White his first rushing touchdown of the season. Bison lead it 14 to seven. We have 14 minutes and three seconds now to go in the first half. And again, we appear to have some gremlins in our own lines. And also for uh, missing the touchdown. Chris, do you have the drive on that play for the Bison? We've had so much go in the first quarter up in the booth, at least down on the field, it's gone. I do have the drive for you, Bob. It's four plays, 40 yards, only 55 seconds on the Troy White hard run in the reverse. Aylesworth back to... ...neath the streeter, makes the catch, the 28 comes across the 32-yard line, and Lehigh will get their first first down since their initial drive of the game. Got some first uh, quarter statistics for you. Bucknell with 132 yards total offense, 3 of 5 for 101 through the air for Rob Glass. They have 31 yards total on the ground. Rich Lemon accounting for all of those so far, and Lehigh with 97 yards total offense so far. Of course, Bucknell's rushing touchdown scored by White and Horse this afternoon. Back to pass on first and 10 is Aylesworth at the 32. Throws it out on the flat. It's nearly intercepted by Berman. Making the leaping catch is Abdullah, but it'll be right at the line of scrimmage. We'll call it no game on the play. Aylesworth, so 8 out of 10 for 86 yards and a touchdown coming into this drive. He's added to that since. A little interesting, Lehigh has really broken up the run in the pass very well. They've run the ball 11 times, passed 10 times, but they've only gotten 11 yards on the ground so far. Second down now and 11, as they say, the little swing pass. It was yeah, man. only one running back this time. It's Mastro Piero, two receivers to those shorts. Peter inside the left. Bucknell in a five-man front is David Strickton now at the line. Little delay. No, it's a play fake. And Aylesworth going long down to Streeter. He's got a step on Henry and makes a catch at the Bucknell 30 and gets inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Twelve minutes and 47 seconds to go in the half. 14 to seven in favor of Bucknell, but a huge pass play, 44 yards, just sending Streeter down the hash mark, and it's good for a first down. Big, big yardage. Kennedy to the right with Klingerman to the left side. It's Ekstrom. The lone back again, Mastro Piero, a four-man front for Bucknell. Aylesworth give it off on a draw to Mastro Piero inside the 25 to the 23. And it'll be a pickup of four. Second and six is Lehigh getting close to getting in Bucknell's red zone. Three touchdowns have been scored this afternoon. Lehigh scored first in the first quarter.
You played that one? Have you played Miller? Okay, well then, all right, I'll mark that one back then. Okay. With a, out to Gentner. We're leaving it. You bring it in this. I don't think that'll work. If that'll be spot, you got to put spots, I think, don't you? No, we're, we've got the game going on right here, Joe. I'm asking you, do you want me to do it in game or in spots? I mean, are, you gonna, are we going to forget? Is that what we're talking about here? You know what I'm saying? I, I understand that. Are, okay. So then I have to leave my end in spots. And you're leaving your end in spots. We're not going to commercial. You're going to just throw it back here. Are right, you tell me when you're going to do it, and I'll start talking in five seconds. We return to Goodman Stadium. We're apologizing for technical difficulties. Our phone line, we've had all kinds of problems with it here today. We have 11 minutes and 36 seconds to go in the half. Lehigh is still in possession of the ball. 14 to 7, Bucknell leading, but the engineers have a fourth down and less than a yard at the Bucknell 16 and a half yard line. They need to get to the 16 for a first down, and Lehigh is going to eschew the field goal and go for the first down. They're going to operate with double tight ends. Max will be in an eye. Abdullah will be behind Mastro Piero. Klingerman, the lone wide out, probably a decoy to the right side. Aylesworth under center, five-man front for Bucknell. Fourth and a half yard to go for a first down. Long count, they'll run the play. Abdullah will get the handoff and should have the first down at the 16-yard line. Got about a yard, needed about a half yard. Bucknell, I don't think, Bob, was totally convinced on that play that they were going to run or that they were going to run the football. I think they were holding back a little bit in the linebacking court to wait and see if it was going to be a play fake. They did go to the double tight ends for the first time today, but so far, Lehigh has been most successful at throwing the football, and I don't think Bucknell was expecting them to completely run the football. They looked like they were playing at maybe 50-50 in the linebacking core. They'll bring the sticks out to measure, and it is a first down by the length of the football, about a half yard as we thought it was. So the engineers are down seven. They'll come back to the line of scrimmage. They're inside the red zone. They have a first down at the Bucknell 16-yard line. Aylesworth had strolled over to the sideline to talk to Kevin Higgins. Streeter and Klingerman go wide to the right. The tight end is Lafere. He's on the left. Mastro Piero and Abdullah in the backfield. Bucknell with a four-man front. Perry, Patty, Feely, and Berman. Toss to the right side. It's Abdullah following a block on the right side. He'll fight his way inside the 10 to about the 8, maybe down to the 7. And it'll be a second down and about 3 to go for a first down on the 7-yard pickup for the engineer back. Ray Powers, the left tackle on the line, pretty much just took up two men right there, Bob. 6'7", 282, he took up his man, and then he blocked a lane for Russ Strohecker to try to get to the ball carrier to, to allow Lehigh to get the yardage. Something you don't see, the left tackle pulled all the way around down the right sideline. Better part of eight yards picked up that time on forward progress for Abdullah. It's now second down and two. Lehigh has the ball at the eighth. They need to get to the six for a first down. Aylesworth rolls to the left side, throws it underneath, making the catch. The five is the fullback, Mastro Piero. He'll be bumped out of bounds at the three, where Lehigh will have it first and goal. Lehigh has adjusted very well here in the second quarter to the Bucknell pass rush because Aylesworth has done a good job of getting rid of the football. And the much more of a hurry now. He wasn't expecting such a great rush, but Berman was right in his face on that play. Dumped it off to Mastro Pieri to get the yardage and the first and goal. First and goal for the engineers inside the three at about the two and a half. It was John Henry that bumped him out of bounds on the last play. They've got an offensive lineman now in the backfield for Lehigh at fullback as they've got their power set in the ball game. Only one wide out, that's Klingerman. The backup tight end, Petulo in motion from left to right. The handoff to Abdullah, and the lineman in front of him does nothing in blocking. Bernard Perry, one of the first to get to him, he'll lose a yard back to the four. The Bison with great surge to the point of attack. Russ Strohecker also in the backfield for the Bison. Perry, as we mentioned, started for Ed Jackson at defensive end, and he's done a great job today so far. He's closed off Hulls very well. He's been in the backfield on a couple of plays and putting some pressure on Aylesworth. Perry doing the job today. We have yet to see Ed Jackson. 
Ed Jackson's played a little on special teams, and Bucknell, other than Patty and excuse me, Feely and Castiglia, have not changed much in the defensive line yet. Second and goal now from the four. Lehigh in the regular eye this time. Aylesworth will play fake, go back to pass, throw over the middle, and it's intercepted in the end zone by Russ Strohecker, and that's going to deny a Lehigh score. It'll be Strohecker's third interception of the season, his seventh of the career. Poor decision by Aylesworth. Again, they try to go for the misdirection play, come around to the opposite side once they get everybody going one way, and throw in the flat somewhere. He had nobody in the flat. Bucknell read it very well. Strohecker staying home to avoid against Aylesworth trying to go to the end zone by himself, ducked back into coverage and picked that one off right in the middle of the end zone, and Bucknell gets a big break right there to prevent Lehigh from scoring. So with 9.58 to go in the half, Bucknell remains on top, 14-7. to It's the first turnover of the afternoon. McHugh in front of Lemon as Bucknell lines up in the eye on first and 10. They get it at the 20. It's a handoff to the fullback straight up the middle. McHugh will get about three. Second and seven coming up the middle of the Lehigh line, able to stop him. But again, the pile kept moving forward and forward, and they may give him more than three yards. Now, now they're going to move it back to the 23, so it'll be a gain of three. Second and seven coming up for the Bison. Actually, the ball between the 23 and the 24, so we'll call it a gain of three and a half. For Putnick and White to the left side, Sikowski to the right side, Lehigh on a four-man front. Only one back this time, it's Lemon. Gluss barks out the signals, back to pass, has time. Now rushes himself to the left, throws out in the flat, Lemon makes a catch and is tackled immediately by the middle linebacker, Slowick. And Bucknell will pick up a few yards. We'll call it a gain of two to three yards to Lemon. And that totally that time was the safety valve. Gluss had time, but was flushed out of the pocket late as Lehigh had great coverage. Good read by the Lehigh defense. They had everybody covered, and they had the main man. That's John Slowick on the far side, skiing home in case Gluss should run it himself. He was right there, so Gluss recognized he couldn't run it, just dumped it off to Lemon. Dangerous play. Lemon almost could have gotten hurt on that play because he had to go up in the air and catch it. it. Also could have been nearly intercepted or incomplete either. Lemon made a great catch, jumping in the air. Third and four. Gluss left side, short side on the option. He'll keep the ball, but it won't get the first down. He'll get maybe two, and the Bison will be short fourth and two now at play just never did set up that time Lehigh got in the backfield in a hurry and disrupted the timing not what Bucknell wanted to do coming off that interception Bob they at least wanted to get a first down or two to give the defense more of a rest after a lengthy drive that the Lehigh engineers put together in the last series they shut it down with the interception but you really have to give your defense some more time to to rest on the sideline before having to go back out there again and try and close down a very potent offense of Lehigh. Miller on to punt for the second time today. The first one was a low line driving kick that rolled for 63 yards. On fourth and two, Miller gets a higher punt this time. Klingerman will field it over his shoulder at the 34, and he'll get to the 35 before he's run out of bounds over there by the first man to hit him, John Caldwell. Just 36 yards on this punt for Rich Miller. 14 to seven, the Bison lead. Down to seven minutes and 51 seconds to go in the half. Bob Aylesworth returns to the field with the Lehigh offense. They were able to move the ball. They got it into a first and goal situation. And then Russ Strohecker came up huge with the interception and denied Lehigh a chance at tying the game. Kennedy along with Klingerman wide to the left side. Streeter to the right. The lone back is Abdullah. Bucknell in a four-man front. Fairly deep drop by the linebackers. Aylesworth rolling to the left side. Stops, now throws down the hash mark. Klingerman makes a catch at the 49 of Lehigh. Good enough for a first down, 13 on the play. I believe it's Klingerman's first catch of the afternoon, and it is. You can really see where Ellsworth and Klingerman have a good connection, Bob. All the receivers on that play ran their patterns. There was nothing there. Klingerman just kind of slid over into the middle of the field, and Ellsworth knew he would be there, threw the football right there. You can see that they've really established a very good connection, know where each other's going to be when they have to be there. It is first and 10 engineers out to their own 49-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Bucknell with a four-man front. Tyrone Moyes is now in there at a defensive tackle, and Moyes jumps off sides but appears to have gotten back. Aylesworth on a quick out, throws it to Ekstrom, who makes a catch at the Bucknell 44-yard line, catching it in front of Crudup. And for the most part, with the exception of that one long pass down the hash to Streeter, for the most part, Lehigh's completions have gone in front of Bucknell defensive backs. That's because Bucknell today is giving a lot more padding in the front with their cornerbacks than they have been usually. It's against this Lehigh potent 
offensive team through the air who likes to throw the ball a lot, that they'll do that. They'll give the five-yard out patterns. They just don't want to give up the big play. Kennedy Klingerman to the right side, Ekstrom to the left, the lone back, Abdullah. Four-man front for the Bison on second down and three. Aylesworth back to pass, trying to set up a screen. Rush comes, and he pretty much grounds it that time, just threw it down at the feet. It's going to be incomplete. The Bison fans are yelling for intentional grounding, but I think they're going to say that there was a Lehigh receiver in the vicinity, and it'll be incomplete. Third down and three coming up. Heads up moves by Aylesworth to get the incompletion. Very good disguise by the Bucknell defense too, Bob. Andy Welty lined up in the wide receiver momentarily. Crotup was back almost like a safety. That mixed up Lehigh a little bit. They didn't really expect to see that. They looked like they might have changed the play at the line of scrimmage looking for the across the middle screen. Third and three for Lehigh. One back, three receivers. Aylesworth on a quick count, back to pass, has time. Throws over the middle. The tight end, Lafere, makes a catch. The Bucknell 40. That'll be good enough for a first down. They needed three, they got four. And Lafere at 6'6", 255, the offensive captain, a very inviting target. So the sticks will move first and 10 engineers. Down to 625 to go in the half. Lehigh is down Bucknell. Now Bucknell by seven, 14 to seven here. LaFear now with a couple of catches in the game, actually four catches for 37 yards. He had the touchdown on the first drive that went for 19. First and 10 now for Lehigh at the Bucknell 40. One back in the backfield, three wide receivers all into the pattern. They throw to the one on the right side. Extra makes a catch in front of the Bison cornerback, and that'll be good enough for another first down, gain of 11 or 12 in front of Charles Crudup as the Bison are just sitting back not wanting to get burned deep, and Lehigh is just picking away, picking away, and walking right down the field. Lehigh just taking what Bucknell's giving them basically right here, Bob. They have not run the football well today, and these short little five, six yard out patterns are just as good as running the football because Bucknell's giving it to them. Lehigh again using three wide receivers into the game for the first time today for the Engineers. Newcomer in the ball game. Dalesworth with a little quick hitter. And Lehigh is going to get nothing on first down. It was sniffed out very well by Andy Welty and also Ed Berman. They were not sold on the fact that Lehigh was going to throw the football. A couple of times today in the three receiver sets, Lehigh has tried to run the football, and they have not been successful at all. Down to 545 and counting to go in the half. They lost one on the first down run. Mastro Piero now the lone back in the backfield. Lehigh on this drive for the most part going with three wide receivers. Second and 11. Aylesworth back to pass. Has time. Throws it right side. Good enough for a first down. Ekstrom in front of Crudup. And the sticks will move again. And the Bison secondary continues to have balls caught in front of them. They get inside the 20 here, Bob, and here's where they start to inch up a little bit closer on the line they did it in the last series. It paid off as they got the interception in the middle of the field with Strohecker, but I don't think you'll see them give up these five-yard patterns as readily right here. They'll come up just a little bit closer and keep the receivers honest. First and 10 for Lehigh at the Bucknell 17. They were down here moments ago and threw the interception. Klingerman to the left, Ekstrom to the right. Aylesworth play fakes to Abdullah, back to pass. Aylesworth throws over the middle and making a great catch as Ekstrom at the five. David Todd all over him along with Charles Crudup. Another first down, a gain of a dozen more, and the Engineers come flying back down the field. It's first and goal at the five. The Engineers, when they've gotten inside the 20s today, Bob, have run a lot of patterns over the middle to take advantage of Tide. They know that he's very good against the run, but somewhat weak against the pass. David Todd in there to try and help out on the coverage, but when they get the two men in the middle, they think they can take advantage. First and goal for the Engineers at the five. Kennedy and Klingerman to the right, Streeter to the left, Abdullah the lone back. Bucknell with a four-man front. Aylesworth will roll to the right side. Could run it. Aylesworth still with the ball. He's at the 10, throws it in back of the end zone, incomplete. A lot of traffic near the goal line, and he just threw it away basically to buy himself another play from the five-yard line. Second down and goal coming up from there. Jim Jaroshak into the game, Bob. The Bison ran the nickel that time, but they brought in Jaroshak to come in on the far side to watch Aylesworth. They wanted somebody with some speed on him. He came up right in Aylesworth's face and caused him to throw the football away. Second down and goal at the five. Jaroshak, of course, one of the more sure tacklers on this team, especially if you get a goal line play. He's one of the guys you feel might be able to throw Aylesworth back. It is second and goal at the five. The lone back, Abdullah again, three wide receivers set. Bucknell showing blitz with some linebackers. We'll see if they come. They do. 
Aylesworth hands off to Abdullah, gets maybe to the four, and then gets thrown back. David Todd made the tackle and jarred the ball loose, and the Bison have recovered a fumble for their second turnover of the game. We talked about turnovers in the pregame, Chris, and said we thought Bucknell would be able to force more than they give, and that's two huge ones that basically save 14 points. I think it was Jeremy Patty that recovered the fumble. And forcing it was both Todd and John Henry. Both safeties came up and did a great job on the open field tackling. We mentioned Todd and his tackling abilities. John Henry, another guy who's great cat tackling, coming up from the safety spot, did a nice job there to pop it free as Patty came up with the recovery. Twice today, Bucknell has gone to the bend, but don't break defense, and they come up with the big turnovers inside the tent. So the Bison down in Be Careful Country have a first down at their own four. They run Lemon up the middle. He may get a yard to the five. So many different looks the Bison defense has given Lehigh today, and that's really confused them at times. The only thing that they've been successful on, for the most part, are those out patterns of about five and six yards. So Bucknell dodges another bullet. As Strohecker intercepts about five minutes before Patty with the fumble recovery. So it is now a second down and nine from the five yard line. Toss left side to Lemon following a block from McHugh gets out across the 10 to about the 12. And Lehigh, we've been handed a note, has moved the ball now over 60 yards twice and has failed to score this afternoon. The turnovers have been very costly this season. Lehigh now has fumbled eight times and has thrown 14 interceptions and is now a whopping minus eight on the turnover now in six and a half games. For Bucknell, they are the Patriot League leading plus six. Lehigh now will have to stare down Bucknell's third and two. The Bison with the ball at the 12. They need to get to the 14 for a first down. Less than three and a half minutes to go in the half. It's a toss sweep to Lemon. Lemon following McHugh's block. He'll be stopped right near the first down marker, but I think he's got the first down by about a half yard, again following a block from fullback Steve McHugh. They'll move the sticks as he got out to the 15 yard line. Again, they follow the block of McHugh. McHugh running on the sweeps with Lemon is really an underrated blocker. He's done the job several times this year. Last week comes to mind right off the back, the 83 yard run that Lemon had on the sweep of the very first play of the ball game. McHugh, an outstanding blocker on the sweeps. Down to 310 to go on the half, 14 to seven in favor of Bucknell. Gloves handing off to Lemon, trying left end. Lemon gets across the 20 out to about the 21 yard line. Pick up of about five on the play, second and five coming up. Lehigh's linebacker, John Slowick out there to make the tackle again for the engineers. Bucknell getting a lot better blocking on the sweeps that they've run here in the second quarter than they did early in the ball game. They tried to take advantage of Lehigh very early and got shut down. Lemon was knocked for losses early as we talked about, but they've opened it up here in the second quarter. Second down and five for the Bison. The ball on the 31, or excuse me, the 21. They need to get to the 26 for a first down. Gluss play fakes to Svensson, dumps it out in the flat, and the ball knocked down and intercepted. Lehigh will have it on the Bucknell 10. Only the fourth interception thrown by Rob Gluss. Just plain and simple, didn't get it high enough. I think DeAndre Dina was the man that came up with the interception. Dina right in his face. He had the Bucknell blocker right in front of him. Gluss just trying to get rid of the football, trying to get over Dina's head. But Dina, a defensive lineman catching the football, very surprising. You see them always have the big taped hands just trying to get around guys, trying to knock passes down. But a great job by Dina to hold on to that football. And Lehigh has a chance to atone for its two big turnovers so far inside the 10. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. One with nine minutes to go, one with four minutes to go, and now one with 2.26 to go. And Lehigh back in business, first and 10 on the 11 of Bucknell. Aylesworth rolls left, now turns around, runs to the right. Hit as he throws, throws it in the end zone. Wide open at the last minute, a Lehigh wide receiver, but it's off his fingertips. It may have been intended for the tight end, uh, LaFerre, or maybe it's the wide receiver, Ekstrom, Front number is very, very difficult to read on these Lehigh Brown jerseys. We're going to call it intended for Lafere, the tight end incomplete. I think if you're Bucknell right now, you have to be very happy with the pressure you've gotten on Ellsworth today. He's made a couple of passes where he's almost he's made some big mistakes there. He almost got very lucky. It was just a broken play towards the end. They've sacked him twice today. Second down and 10 from the 11 of Bucknell. Three wide receivers set. Kennedy and Klingerman to the left. Streeter to the right. Abdullah will go out in the flat. Aylesworth throws it right side. Streeter makes a catch to four. He'll be hit immediately there by 
Rob Byrd and Charles Crudup, and Lehigh now will have a third down and three to go for a first down, four to go for a touchdown as the ball on the four-yard line. And once again, the officials will change the spot. They'll bring the ball outside the five to the six, and Lehigh is going to spend a timeout. They'll use their second timeout. We'll take it with them. A minute 57 to go in the half, 14 to seven, Bucknell. You're listening to Bucknell football on the Bison Sports Network. Are we good, Joe? I'm sorry? Yeah, it was Streeter. Yeah. Is this better? A six, whoever six is. Okay. You think the problem was that? Hmm. Well, if it's better, yes. Okay. 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 Right. Over. Okay. Right. Okay. Great. Thanks, Pryor. Okay, Joe. Okay. Huge play here coming up for Lehigh. Bucknell leads it 14 to seven. Lehigh with a third and four from about the five. Of course, five for a touchdown. Aylesworth, a roll to the left side, floats it into the end zone, and wide open for the score is Brian Klingerman. Jack Boyle hit him, but it was way too late. They didn't account for Klingerman. It's his first touchdown of the game and his 11th of the season, and Lehigh back within a point at 14 to 13. We talked about maybe seeing Boyle in the nickel. Bucknell went with it on that play, Bob. And Boyle's assignment was to stay with Klingerman. He was supposed to have another man in front of him. He cheated up a little bit, and that left Boyle on him. Boyle was a good five yards away. He's got to stay with Klingerman, especially when the, the uh, Lehigh engineers are inside the five-yard line. Not a whole lot of room to run around in the end zone. 18th touchdown pass of the season for Aylesworth. He had two at, at uh, Tulane against Navy back in 92, so he now has 20 touchdown passes for his career. Swartz on for the extra point to try to tie it. Outstanding crowd here today at Lehigh, over 13,000, 13,101, seventh biggest crowd ever at Lehigh, and Swartz extra point is up and good, and we've got another break in the action with the score. Lehigh 14, Bucknell 14, a minute 52 to go in the half. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Huh? Okay. Uh, can't see the clock. Seventh largest? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to use a fumble recovery. I just have the three. Okay. Bob Beeler along with Chris Carlin back here as we have the game tied up once again at 14 all with a minute 52 to go in the half. And kicking off is Lehigh Swartz, a very high short kick. It's going to be let go and picking it up is Parham at the 23. Breaks the initial tackler, comes to the side and he'll be knocked down, no gain. Adam Kelson on the tackle for Lehigh and the Bison almost let that kick off go. It's a live ball and it looked to me like one of the upbacks, McHugh or Horse should have tried to take the ball and pick up some yardage. After two drives of 60 yards or more, not coming up with any score, Lehigh picks up a drive, three plays, 11 yards, only 36 seconds, capped off by the five-yard touchdown pass from Aylesworth to Klingerman. So we're even at 14. Bucknell with all their timeouts remaining. They've got a minute and 46 with which to work in the half. First and 10 at the 
24-yard line. Lemon on a little draw, and he'll get nothing. In fact, he'll lose four yards back to the 20, making the tackle DeAndre Dina with help from Sam Lawler. The two defensive tackles converged and made the stop. Bucknell without a huddle, down to a minute and a half to go in the half. Second down and 14. Gluss throws it left side. Lemon makes the catch for a very short gain, a gain of about three out to the 23-yard line. And the Bison will have a third down and 11 to go for a first down. And now the clock is stopped. And I would think Lehigh is going to want to keep it stopped and use their final timeout, figuring that if they stop them here, they could get a punt. So Lehigh is out of timeouts, but if they stop them here, they'll have a chance to get the ball back. Other Patriot League scores, Col Colgate with a 21-0 lead over Fordham at halftime. And Lafayette leads Holy Cross 14-3. Last check with 10.57 to go in the second quarter. Got some other top 25 scores that are in, of interest. Florida State, 14-0 over Clemson. Boston College, 22nd in the country, 7-0 over Rutgers. Miami, all over West Virginia, 25-0. And Ohio State, 38, Purdue, nothing. That's in the second quarter. Very important third down for Bucknell because with a minute 15 to go, Lehigh will get the football back if Bucknell is not able to convert this third down and 11 right here. Rob Gluss will stroll back over for visiting with head coach Lou Maranzana and offensive coordinator Mike O'Connor. We've seen three turnovers in the game. All of them have been Bucknell's end of the field. Two that prevented Lehigh touchdowns and one after the second turnover. Gave Lehigh the ball back again on the 11-yard line and led to Lehigh's tying touchdown. Minute 19 to go in the half, 14 all to score. The lone back is McHugh, Lemon in the slot to the right side. Three receivers go right. Gluss will roll to the right side. Gluss looking to throw. Now Gluss being chased and sacked back at the 18. Dina on the tackle. That'll be Dina's fourth sack of the season. The clock will run, a minute six to go. And the Bison should try to work this clock down as far as possible as it's fourth and 15 after the four yard loss. A coverage sack for the defense of Lehigh. Again, you see the expertise and the experience of the secondary. All four returning starters who we mentioned, and they did a great job in coverage. Gloss had nobody to throw to. Herbert to snap, Miller on to punt, back in single safety, Klingerman for the engineers. 10 men at the line, they rush him, but Miller gets it away and gets a very nice spiraling kick over the head of Klingerman. It'll bounce the 30, roll inside the 25 and kick out of bounds at the 22, a 58 yard punt for Rich Miller. He's had two long ones and a short one today and that was a big one for the Bison because the roll made the clock continue to run and now Lehigh will start at 33 seconds away from the end of the half and they'll have to go 78 yards without a timeout. But this passing attack, that is possible. On the half, Aylesworth for Lehigh has completed now 18 of 25 passes. And for Bucknell, Gloss has completed five of eight passes. First and 10 now, Lehigh at the 22-yard line, their own. Five-man rush for Bucknell. They go to the run, a quick hitter to the fullback, Mastro Piero. He'll get out across the 30 to about the 31, very close to a first down. The clock will continue to run with 23 seconds to go. Lehigh looks like they're more intent on just running the half out here, Chris, and they are putting points on the board. Well, Bucknell back in the nickel just in case they do decide to run the football, but or inside to decide to throw the football, excuse me, but Lehigh... Happy to be tied at 14-14, although if you look at Lehigh so far, they should be a little bit disappointed with two long drives of 60 yards or more and not being able to get into the end zone or at least a field goal out of it. They should really be ahead in this game because they've moved the football very well against the Bison defense. Well, we've had... William Mary in Richmond. Here come the engineers. 
the setup work okay for everybody? The way we work? Heath, is it all right with you? Other than... If you need to hear the spots, Chris, sometimes you can kill... How could they be breaking up? All right. Well, we apologize if we're having any more uh, technical difficulties here. Uh, some of the descriptions of some of the problems we've had here today, Chris, boggle the mind from this end. <laughs> well, I tell you what, one thing that doesn't boggle the mind is the way that this game is going. It's exactly what we expected. They've been throwing the ball very well, has Lehigh. Bucknell has been rushing the ball adequately. They haven't gotten it in the hands of, in Lemon, of Lemon's hands as much as they would have liked. He's only got 45 yards in the first half, but you look at what Lehigh is doing. They've gotten seven different receivers into the action today, and five of which with more than one catch. So they've really been spreading the ball around. Lehigh has got to be very happy with the way they've been throwing the ball. Obviously, Lehigh can't be happy with blowing two long drives and then turning it over inside the opponent's 10-yard line. I think Bucknell's got to be very happy that they got out of the first half with a 14-14 tie. Bucknell is going to get the football first in the second half. Swartz has it teed up on the near hash mark. That's the right hash mark at the 35-yard line. White far side, Parham near side, standing on the 10. Swartz kicks off, high end over end kick. Parham will field it on the 2. Come up to the 5, to the 10, to the 15. Get hit at the 18 and will not see the 20. And Bucknell will start it in back of the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 there for the Bison. Not a great blocking scheme on the return for Parham. He didn't have very many lanes in front of him to run to. Everybody lined up to block, but there was some mixed and missed assignments on that return, so he couldn't get very much, and obviously it shows not being able to get out to the 20. First and 10 for the Bison on their own 18. We'll spot the Bison offense as they break the huddle. Rich Lemon will be the tailback. It'll be Rob Gloss at quarterback. The Bison will send Phillips wide to the left, Sikowski wide to the right. The fullback is McHugh. He'll be in the slot to the right side. Lehigh on the four-man front. Gloss will hand off to Lemon. Lemon goes around right in. 20, 25, 30. Has the first down out to the 33-yard line. A pickup of 14 on the play for Rich Lemon, and that may be Lemon's one of his longest runs of the day. I think he had one that was longer early in the first half when he ran for over 30 yards. But uh, when Lemon runs around right in, Chris, I think that's his strongest play. And I think running around the right end is the strongest play, not only because of Lemon, but because of Ed Fratarelli and DeFalco on that side. They've opened up some huge holes today. Referees are stopping the clock. And they stop it with 14.38 to go in the third quarter in a 14-all ball game. And the officials will huddle. And I can't imagine, Chris, what they're talking about right now. The clock appears to be about right, 14.38. I don't know if they're going to try to put some seconds back on the clock, maybe. No, they're going to say Lehigh is going to spend a timeout. I think one of Lehigh's trainers came out on the field momentarily and then darted back, and that held up play momentarily. So Lehigh is forced to waste a timeout, so that means down the stretch they'll only have two instead of three. That could really hurt Lehigh down the stretch. You look at what Lehigh tried to do in that first play defensively, Bob. They stacked eight men up front again. Again, the four down linemen and the four linebackers, they brought up the strong safety to act as that fourth linebacker. But Bucknell with an excellent job of blocking. I think that the size factor in Bucknell's favor on the right side is really starting to wear down Lehigh a little bit. As we go along in the second half, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bucknell try and run right all day long. One of the statistics from the first half that may be the most telling, Lehigh had the ball for over 18 minutes. Bucknell had it for under 12 minutes, so it decided Time of possession advantage for the engineers. No boom to the left side, Phillips to the right. The lone back is Lemon. He'll carry on the second play, bounce it outside to the right, gets across the 35, slides forward to the 37 for five more yards, second and five coming up for Bucknell. Something that Coach Higgins of Lehigh mentioned in the pregame was Rich Lemon's great cutback speed. He brushed in that one back to the other side when it was designed to go to the left side. But the Lehigh defensive lineman had knifed right in. Sam Lawler did a good job to 
shut that play down to the left, but Lemon got some yardage going back to the right. Sikowski and Phillips wide to the left side, the wide side of the field. The tight end Gentile on the right, Baxson and I. Lemon will carry, this time straight up the middle. He'll spin across the line of scrimmage for maybe a yard, and Bucknell now will have to convert a third down and four for a first down. Lemon has not done much between the tackles in the last two weeks. Virtually everything has gone to the flanks. Bucknell two out of five on third downs in the first half, and now they have to look at a third and four here. Ball at the 38 yard line. They need to get to the 42 for a first down. Phillips, no boom to the left. Lehigh in a five man front. Gluss on a long count. Lemon the lone back. Gluss back to pass, being rushed. Throws it out in the flat. Lemon makes a catch at the 35. A man misses at the 40. Across the 45 to 50 into Lehigh territory. Across the 45 to the 44. He'll pick up the first down. Great blocks in front of him by center Gary Petros, who was running right with Rich Lemon to. Uh, escort him into Lehigh territory. It'll be a 17-yard pass play to Rich Lemon. That play set up on the screen and the downfield blocking really made it, Chris. And you can credit Steve McHugh with a good block on the near side too, Bob. He kept all the players on the near side, two, def two defensive backs for Lehigh away from Rich Lemon and long enough to get yardage. And it's first and 10 now on the 44 of Lehigh. Gluss back to pass, looking long. Heaves it right side. Sikowski out there and he's going to try to make the over-the-shoulder catch incomplete. Michael Blunt had great coverage that time it's incomplete second and ten coming up for Bucknell you don't see Bucknell go to Sikowski on the outside and one-on-one -on -one a lot because he doesn't have a great deal of size to him you look at John Sikowski his size only 5'8 168 you see them go to the note boom the 6'3 receiver on the outside one-on-one -on -one a lot kind of surprised that note boom with the bigger size wasn't lined up on the outside in that play Bucknell's offensive line gay donkers Petras of course, DeFalco and Fratarelli. Lehigh with a four-man front. The same four have been in there all the way. Owens, Dina, along with Lawler, and also more. Gluss on third down, throws it down the hash mark, or check it on second down, throws it down the hash mark to Gentili. He'll make the catch, the 30, rumble inside the 25 for a first down. Tony Perilla, the junior strong safety on the tackle, but not before another big pickup. They've worked him down the hash mark a couple of times, that one going for 23 yards. The other one was a long catch, too, for 42 yards earlier in the game. Gentili has been open over the seam all day long, and they've taken advantage. They've only gotten it really to him twice because they've been trying to establish the run. Opening drive of half number two. Bucknell with a first and 10 on the Lehigh 22 yard line. Gluss hands off to Lemon. Lemon around right end. 20 and dives towards the 15 yard line. They'll mark the knee down at the 16. It'll be a pickup of six or seven more. And this drive has really been Bucknell's best drive of the afternoon so far. And who's to uh, think that it wouldn't be because the third quarter, Bucknell has done their best work offensively. Didn't score last week in the third, but overall 58 points in the third quarter, and they've only given up 26. I think that was a telling statistic a week ago. They were outscored 9-0 in the third quarter by Cornell, usually their best quarter of the year. Second and four, Lemon up the middle. Lemon will penetrate the 15, maybe to the 14, and it'll leave Bucknell with a third down and two coming up. So third and two coming up. Lawler, the defensive tackle, made the stop for Lehigh. And the Bison will have to try to convert here on third down, and from where the sticks look, it looks like it's actually less than two. They'll operate with one tight end, Gentile, both receivers wide to the left, Phillips and Sikowski. Lemon the load back on third down and two. Gluss is gonna roll left side on the option. Gluss will keep it and will not get the first down. Tripping him up was defensive end Rich Owens. That play never got started. The option this afternoon, Chris, has not worked. And now Bucknell with a fourth down and two plus, actually closer to three yards, and it appears that the Bison are going to go for it, and they're going to bring on a couple of extra tight ends and the fullback Steve McHugh, so they're going to leave field goal kicker Rich Miller on the bench in a 14-all tie with 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Note boom and Phillips to the right, the tight end Zabelski on the left. Backs are in an eye. Gluss will roll to the right side on fourth and three. It's a throwback pass to Lemon. Catches it at the 20. Brian Gay blocking, and Lemon will score on a fourth down and 
Four to go for a first down. Brian Gay sprung him with the huge block at about the seven yard line. What a beautifully designed play for Bucknell. They've seen the misdirection from Lehigh all afternoon and they ran it themselves. They just left Lemon and Brian Gay on the left side by their lonesomes and that was enough because 10 other brown jerseys for Lehigh were on the far side of the field. He only had one man to beat, did Rich Lemon, and he had Brian Gay in front of him to beat him for him. And for Gluss now, that is touchdown pass number 11 on the season. The Bison now have scored uh, 12 touchdowns passing and 13 running. Rich Miller's extra point is up, and it is good. And the Bison with 10.52 to go in the third quarter, lead it by the score of 21 to 14. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Next Saturday, what you might want to do. Post ball game. Move all of these over here and just keep coming. Uh, nine plays, 408, right? Oh. 10 plays, 408, 82 yards. Okay. Do you hear the commercial? Reserve your seat now for minor league baseball at its finest with the Williamsport Cubs. Prime locations are going fast. Box seats put you right on top of the action. At just $150 for a season ticket, you can't afford to miss out. That's less than $4 a game. To reserve your seat for the 95 season or for more information, call the Cubs at 326-3389. <laughs> Bob Beeler back along with Chris Carlin and our statisticians Frank Thompson and Heath Mathias. 21-14 Bucknell. Rivers will take the ball at the 10-yard line, come up to the 20 to the 25, out to the 30-yard line. To hear Rivers, the backup cornerback, with a 21-yard return getting out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. And that's where Lehigh will start their first possession, first and 10. Rivers picking up the extra yardage, about 12 or 13 yards because Bucknell over-pursued. Michael Haggerty came knifing through, Bob, and just took off. All Rivers had to do was sidestep, and he had an extra 10 yards to his return. So the Bison score on their first possession of the afternoon in the second half. Lehigh scored on their first possession in the first half. 10.44 to go in the third. 21-14 Bucknell, first and 10. Aylesworth hands off to Stillings, busting tackles in the middle. He'll have a first down. John Henry finally made the stop at about the 44-yard line, but not before 13 yards on the ground. And no misdirection that time, just straight ahead running, and it paid off for Stillings for his longest run of the afternoon. That's a good play call because they almost faked the play fake. It almost looked like Aylesworth was going to keep it himself and look to throw rolling out to the right. We've seen them do that a few times today. The handoff picks up the yardage this time, is getting set up for by earlier players in this game. First and 10, they spot the ball at the 45 of Lehigh. One back, three receivers, five-man rush. Back to pass is Aylesworth being flushed out of the pocket being chased by Griesick. Aylesworth is going to scamper out of bounds to the 40 for a four-yard loss. Technically, it will not go down in the books as a sack, but that's as much of a sack as I've seen without anybody getting hit because he went out of bounds and gave up the yardage. In fact, they're going to mark him out of bounds Looks like inside the 40 at about the 38-yard line, so it'll be a loss of seven on the play. He had good time to throw the football, Bob. He had good protection. He was in the pocket for about four or five seconds, but you have to credit the Bucknell secondary with good coverage downfield to prevent him from throwing the ball, trying to create a play rolling to the outside. Second and 17, the ball back inside the 40 at the 38. Again, a three-wide receiver set. Mastro Piero, the lone back. Bucknell with a four-man rush. Aylesworth being chased by Berman. He'll be sacked. Greasek will help finish him off and more losses on the play for Lehigh. This will lose nine back inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Again, it's hard to run an effective play fake when you can't run the football. Bucknell recognizing that, scouting it very well, that Lehigh runs a lot of play fakes, but they can't run the ball very well. If you're Bucknell, you can run the ball very well, thus your play fakes work. It hasn't worked so far today for Lehigh. Lehigh did a great job on third downs in the first half. They were 6 of 11. But here with 9.44 and counting to go in the third, they're looking at third down and 26. They have to get all the way to the Bucknell 45 for a first down. The ball at the Lehigh 29. Bucknell with a four-man rush. Lehigh is going to sprint Aylesworth out to the right side, and Aylesworth's going to be sacked again. This time it's John Caldwell. Russ Strohecker had a chance to get him, but Aylesworth pulled up 
and that allowed Strohecker to blindside him from the back, or check it, Caldwell to blindside him from the back. It's going to be a loss of 10 more on the play, and Lehigh going in completely the wrong direction, Chris. Fourth sack of the afternoon for the Bucknell defensive front. I tell you what, Bucknell has just got to be thrilled with the fact that they have gotten such great pressure on. It's actually the fifth sack of the afternoon. They've done a great job. They've really set them back on this drive. Of course, two or three on that drive alone. Talbot will punt high, spiraling kick. Phillips will come up. David Todd nearly had it touch him as he was coming back to block. And the ball's going to roll dead at the Bucknell 42. The Bison will start it in excellent field position. First and 10 on their own 42. But that nearly hit David Todd on the top of the helmet as the ball was coming down. Bison will have it first down and 10 on their own 42-yard line. Nobody in this ball game has been ahead by more than seven. Lehigh led initially seven nothing. Four minutes later, Bucknell tied it at seven. Then Bucknell went ahead early in the second quarter at 14 to seven. Lehigh tied it with about a minute plus to go in the half at 14 all. After the Bison turned the ball over on their own 10 and Bucknell on their first drive takes the lead again by seven, 21-14. Lemon runs over the right side and Chris, you're right. The right side has become more effective in this third quarter. Lemon continuing to get positive yardage, picks up six or seven on first down. Has now carried the ball 16 times for 67 yards and obviously is over the 2,000 for his career. He only needed nine for that. And Lehigh was expecting them to run to the right side, Bob. They've stacked up the extra linebacker on the short side, which you normally don't see them do, but Fraterelli and DeFalco again opening a huge hole between them. Second down and four after the six yard run by Lemon. Lemon the load back, Lehigh jumping around, but it appears they got back on the defensive line, and Lemon will be popped at the line of scrimmage. That may have been the linebacker Slowick or the cornerback Blunt that lowered the boom on Lemon, and that threw Lemon back for a yard loss. It was John Slowick coming up with some good closing speed. He got some help as he was stacked up in the backfield initially. Lemon was slowed up by Rich Owens, who was in the backfield, but Slowick came up and put the finishing touches on him. Bison will have to try to convert a third down and about six to go for the first down. It's a ball back on the 46. They need to go to the 48 of Lehigh for the first down. Sikowski and White going to the right side. Lone back again is Lemon as McHugh is in the slot. Gluss will play fake to Lemon. Back to pass, being chased, stepping up in the pocket. And he's going to be sacked by Lawler back at the 39, a loss of six. And Bucknell is going to have to send the punting team. The defensive lines in the last two drives have looked outstanding for each team. So Buck, excuse me, I was going to say Bucknell not able to put some points on the board to take the lead to two scores. Klingerman in single safety, 10 men at the line for Lehigh. Miller has had a pretty good afternoon, averaging over 50 yards a kick today. Herbert ready to snap. Nice snap, rush comes, but Miller gets it away. It's another low line driving kick. It's going to be caught on the spiral to 21 by Klingerman. Klingerman to the left side, to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, out across the 45 to the 47. 38 yards on the punt. And a nice return by Klingerman, about 17 yards for him. Ed Jackson makes the tackle. He's been, he's obviously got to be pretty fresh out there because he hasn't been playing much on the defensive line, but Jackson with some good speed to shut that down and not allow Klingerman to get any farther downfield. Could have been a score. Lehigh will start this drive in excellent field position at their own 46-yard line. Have not seen much of the shotgun from Aylesworth. Last year, we saw symptom felter in it about 50% of the time. Aylesworth will roll to the right side, throw on the run. The tight end, LaFere, makes a catch at the Bucknell 48. Has the first down at the Bucknell 40. A pickup of 14 yards, but a flag on the play. Late flag on the near sideline. And a bison is slow to get to his feet. And it appears that Bernard Perry has been shaken up. So Ed Jackson will probably come in for him at defensive end. Lehigh is walking back, so it appears the penalty will be against them. Maybe some court, sort of an illegal block. The Bison are pointing that they appeared at the penalty is against Lehigh. They're visiting with Bucknell middle linebacker Russ Stroek here to ask him as far as what they want for the penalty, and I'm sure, Chris, they're going to take it because Lehigh had a first down. It is Berman down on the field, and it appears Len Griesick. Oh, I think it's Perry. Or Perry down on the field, excuse me, but Len Griesick will come into the game. Griesick with that big cast on his arm, kind of similar to what Rob Bird had earlier in the season, like a big club. Here's it, maybe it's just cramps for Perry because he's up now and walking off under his own power, and fortunately for trainers Julie Augustine and Carmen Luzio, they're not going to have to carry Big Bernard off at 6'1", 236 pounds. 
asked him about it one time. They said that it's their job to carry people off. I said, why don't you get the big guys out there to help you? <laughs> Illegal use of the hands to call against Lehigh, so they will get a one-yard gain on the play because it came downfield. The penalty will move back to the 48 of Lehigh, so it'll be a one-yard gain technically on the play. First and, First and nine now. The down goes over. Three wide receivers. Everyone into the pattern. Aylesworth on a straight drop. Slings it over the middle and making the catch and then being hit by Andy Welty immediately. The wide receiver, Brian Klingerman. But it's good enough for a first down, a gain of 10. Klingerman getting the hand because he got popped by Welty and then just got back up and ran to the huddle without a problem. Could still be in shock and he's going to come out for this play. That was a pretty big hit by Welty. Timed it perfectly. Unfortunately, it could have been just a hair earlier that might have been able to pop the ball free. He will stay in the game. 6.22 to go in the third quarter. 21-14 Bucknell. Engineers on the march. First and 10 from the Bucknell 43. Aylesworth sprints out to the left. Stops, hit as he throws by Berman. Throws it long and overshoots Streeter. Nearly intercepted by the free safety David Todd. Streeter had a step on the man assigned to him. That was Charles Crudup. If it wasn't for Todd coming over at the free safety, it might have been six points for the engineers. If Todd had been turned around completely, it was going to be an easy interception, but he was doing his job. He was staying right in the face of the receiver, and when he finally did turn around, had just enough to knock it away. So Lehigh now with a second down and 10 from the Bucknell 43. They'll send Kennedy now and Klingerman to the left side. The tight end, Lafere, also goes left. Streeter, the lone wide out to the right, and this time Aylesworth will operate out of the shotgun. Four-man front for the Bison. Nice pass from center. Aylesworth having time. Aylesworth throwing over the middle. Threads the needle perfectly to Klingerman. This will be worth nine yards to the 34. It'll be third and one coming up for the engineers. And Klingerman has done a nice job finding dead spots in the zone and sitting over the middle and making the catch in traffic. Give you an idea about how strong of an arm Ellsworth has. He's throwing it into traffic over the middle quite a few times today and has not even had one knocked down yet. He's really zipped it in there very well, throwing some good, showing some good arm strength across the middle of the field. Down to five and a half minutes to go in the third. Third down and one for the engineers. They'll go with double tight ends. Mastro Piero in front of Stillings in the eye. The lone wideout is Klingerman. Four-man front for Bucknell. Linebacker cheats up to make five. Quick hitter to the fullback. Mastro Piero carrying tacklers with him inside the 30 down to the 25. It'll be a gain of nine. Great blocking at the point of attack by Lehigh, blowing Bucknell off the ball that time. Making the tackle, John Henry, the strong safety. And you do have to credit the right side of the line, Rich Slomko and Don Gormson opening up the hole for him to run through. Not to mention the center, Chris Bauer, with a nice job for Lehigh. So it's first and 10. The engineers marching it down very close to the 25. Kennedy to the left, Streeter to the right. Again, Aylesworth out of the shotgun. The last time they were in the shotgun, he had the time he needed. When he's been under center, the rush has been able to get to him. He's been sacked five times. Aylesworth back to pass on first and 10. Being chased out of the pocket by Castiglia. Throws it long, and Andy Welty intercepts it. A great tiptoe effort by the Bison captain. He got the foot down and intercepts at the 16. It's the third turnover. And Welty pulls just a beautiful twinkle toes move to keep his feet in bounds. What great, great balance for Andy Welty. First of all, had to reach up to pick that ball out of the air. And second of all, just got the left foot down inside the line by inches to get the Bison the football. Andy Welty with a spectacular defensive play right there. You don't see a lot of great interceptions from linebackers. We've seen two of them today from Strohecker and Welty. And those are your two defensive captains. They come up big. It's the third turnover of the afternoon. The Bison defense is forced. They get it first and 10 on their own 16. It's the third one. They've gotten down deep in their own territory. Lemon tries to run the right side. Lawler is there. He'll lose a yard. And you know, when you think about turnovers, as we have 4.45 to go in the third, those ones you get in your own red zone when they're coming in, to me, actually more important than the ones that you get when you get them on their end of the field. Previous two in your, in, inside your 10 yard line for Bucknell, and then that one came out at about the 16, and you really have to like the things the way Bucknell's doing the defense today, Bob. They've really taken the bend but don't break perspective, and it's worked out very well. Glad you're with us on the Bison Sports Network, WTGC Lewisburg, WWPA in Williamsport. Second and 10 from the 16. Gluss will run the option right side. He'll lose three more, and making the tackle from the 
Defensive end spot appeared to be Greg Moore, and as we look at the option, Chris, it almost looks like it should be put in the deep freeze this afternoon because it has not worked. It has not been there at all, and I was about to say the same thing. That's the one that you start to pack away for the day, Bob, when they've gotten negative yardage on it all afternoon. I don't think Rob Gloss has turned up field once to get some positive yardage out of the option today. He looks very tentative when he's going down the line. Maybe the ankle's still bothering him a bit. 345 and counting to go in the third. Bucknell facing a third and 13 from the 13. Back to pass is Gluss. Blitz comes. Throws it out in the flat to Lemon and the ball bounces in front of him incomplete and that may have been a break for Bucknell if the ball was incomplete because Lemon would have lost five or six more. You know that's the first time today that Lehigh has really brought everybody up front. They only left one linebacker back over the middle for a safety valve to guard the running back but they brought everybody at Rob Gluss. He just had to get rid of the football. On to punt is Rich Miller standing in his own end zone. Lehigh will rush him this time, and he gets it away. Not a very long kick. Klingerman calling for the fair catch at the Bucknell 48-yard line, so it'll be a 35-yard punt. No return, and the engineers once again will have good field position to start their drive. Bucknell, the only touchdown in the third quarter, the only points in the third quarter to lead it 21-14, and Bucknell defense has had a great nose for the football this afternoon. May have to do it again here as Lehigh again starts on the plus side of midfield. First and 10 now. Aylesworth will be under center. Three wide receivers. There's only one back. Bucknell with a four-man front. A couple of linebackers cheating up. The strong safety John Henry now will peel back. Aylesworth to the run. They give it off to Stillings. Stillings will get a couple, and then the hole will close down. Pat Feely was there to knock him down with help from Ed Berman, and Maybe the couple that I thought were there initially closed down even faster than that. Maybe one is what uh, is going to go in the column for Stillings. And I, that may be it. On that play again, Bob, they lined up Welty against the receiver on the outside. Then he backed off. Bucknell's really been trying to cross them up on defense a little bit today. Aylesworth has looked confused at times. And when they ran the handoff at the time, Welty was right there to shut it down. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. 21-14 Bucknell over Lehigh in a battle that We'll probably decide who will be the favorite heading down the race in the Patriot League. And it is a flag on the field. And it looks like Lehigh popped up and moved early. And it was the same thing again. Welty was over on the receiver and then came in as if he was going to blitz, came closer to the line. That's why the man on the far side, Lafere, the tight end, leaped up a little bit because he didn't expect Welty to slide off the receiver and come inside. He was getting ready for the blitz. So it'll be a five-yard penalty against the engineer offense. Haven't been too many penalties this afternoon. Lehigh now with a second down and 15. Five penalties for Lehigh as all this afternoon. Klingerman and Kennedy to the right. Another receiver, possibly Streeter to the left side. One back, Mastro Piero. Bucknell with a five-man front. They'll all come. Aylesworth back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. He'll be sacked again. The ball is loose. It's popped out. And I'm not sure who has it. They're still scrounging for it. And I think Lehigh came up with it. So they'll have a third and 16. And the ball just shot, shot straight up in the air, Chris. Almost like a geyser as the... Uh, Bucknell rushed, the pocket clo closed around Aylesworth, and uh, I think the ball was converged on and won and lost about three times in the pile. I think that's the biggest straight bull rush we've seen from the defensive front of Bucknell today. That pocket closed so hurry, so so quickly that Aylesworth was not ready for it. Other times he said to roll out, and Bucknell has eventually got to him. That time they just used all the power they had and came straight at him. Third down now and 17 to go for the engineers. Bucknell now in a four-man rush. One back, three wide receivers. Everyone into the pattern. Aylesworth straight drop, throws it left side. It's going to be caught, but it's out of bounds, so it'll be incomplete. Intended for Ekstrom, but even if it was complete, it would have been five or six yards short of a first down. I don't understand why Lehigh hasn't gone back to the shotgun today because that's the only time that Aylesworth has had time to throw the football. Bucknell's rush has been spectacular all afternoon. It shows in the four sacks and dozens of hurries they've had on Aylesworth today. 2.02 to go in the third. Bucknell leading 21-14. We'll get the ball back on a punt. Phillips in single safety, standing in his own 19. Ben Talbot, who also plays on the Lehigh baseball team will punt and Talbot's punt is high it's kind of a twirling kick and he'll come down to Phillips on the 21 and he'll run it to the 24 before he'll be tackled right there on the spot by Hector Martinez but Bucknell with fair field position will start it again in a third quarter that after Bucknell scored on their first drive has been pretty much of a defensive struggle probably one of the few times this year on that return, Bob, that we haven't seen very good blocking from Bucknell. David Todd let his man get around him. His man was Martinez, who made the open field tackle on Phillips. Blocking's got to get a little bit better to get some yardage on that return. White to the left side. Sikowski to the right. McHugh in front of Lemon. 
Lehigh with a five-man front as we're coming to the close of the third quarter. Gluss fakes the toss to Lemon, pulls back, looking downfield. Gluss now will run, now will throw, finds Gentilly, makes a catch for the first down at the 35, up the right sideline, gets past the 45 to the 48-yard line, a pickup of 24 on the play, and Rob Gluss very, very slow to get up to his feet and may have re-injured his ankle. And Gluss, when he was running to the outside, Bob, froze the linebacker Lance Eckenrode, who was in the coverage on Gentilly enough to bring him up into the play. He threw right over Eckenrode. A great job by Rob Gluss to fake the run to the outside and then pull up and throw to the open Gentilly. Gluss Gent will head to the sideline right now. Travis Kopp will come on. He's 6 of 15 this year for 94 yards. He's completed 40% of his passes, one touchdown and two interceptions. Kopp hands off to McHugh, the fullback, who will get two to midfield, second and eight coming up. Gluss is standing on the sidelines and looks to be okay, and it appears that Kopp is going to come out, and Gluss is going to come back in to run the second down play. And now Kopp is going to stay on the field as Gluss is going to stand with offensive coordinator Mike O'Connor. He's kind of palms open. Looks like he's pleading his case to get back into the game. Second and eight. Big time for Travis Kopp here. The Bison look a little confused trying to get the play in, and one might expect that with a new quarterback in the ballgame. White and Phillips are checking White and Sikowski wide to the left. Second and eight for Kopp. Travis will go back to pass. Has some time. Heaves it long down the middle of the field. Sikowski is there, but can't run under it at the five. Kopp overthrew him at the five-yard line. Clock stops with 38 seconds to go in the third. And he had Sikowski out there, Chris, but that's a tough pass when you expect it to be on the money from someone who's been sitting for three, uh, for almost three quarters. He's got to be a little bit rusty going out there, Bob. Two yards shorter, and that pass is a big gainer for Bucknell. Maybe even a touchdown. Sikowski was running free down the middle of the field, and once again, Lehigh would be asking themselves who had number 12. Proputnik now, and White go wide to the left on third and eight. Kopp remains the quarterback. Phillips to the right. Lemon the lone back. Five-man front for Lehigh. Cop back to pass on a straight drop. Cop going to be hit and sacked back at the 41-yard line. Good pass rush from the outside. Greg Moore, the defensive end, the first one to get to him. And Rich Miller will come on to punt now with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. You really have to credit the defensive fronts of both teams today. They put a lot of pressure on both quarterbacks. I think Bucknell has gotten a little bit more than it bargained for out of the defensive front of Lehigh today. Fourth down and about 15 to go for a first down. Again, Klingerman in single safety. Herbert to snap. Rush comes, but uh, not overly great. Miller kicks it. Klingerman will let it hit at the 22. It'll roll inside the 15, inside the 10, and Brandon Little will down it at the 8. So a very good punt that time for Rich Miller, 49 yards. More importantly, it rolls dead inside the 10. And that's the end of the third quarter. We've got a break in the action with Bucknell leading 21 to 14. You're listening to Bucknell football on the Bison Sports Network. Yes, sir. Okay, what do you think it was? Okay, do you want me to put the frequency? Next break? Okay. Okay. I think he's done it twice anyway. Okay, great. Are we going back to the extender? Next one. Okay. I think they fixed it on the other end. Perhaps the most 15 minutes of exciting football left to play in the season here in this quarter. Lehigh with the ball first and 10 on their own eight yard line. And Chris, you don't want to get over enthusiastic, but this could be the Patriot League championship right here. I think if you look at it, these two teams are obviously the best two teams in the Patriot League, judging by records alone. I think you have the two premier programs and you have us 15 minutes of football left to play. I think you've got a great 
game left to go here. And Bucknell leading by seven as we begin the fourth quarter. Lehigh will run the ball to Abdullah, who'll get three to the 11-yard line, pounding his way. Rob Bird made the tackle, but Abdullah had to pay for it in getting just those three yards. Just wanted to make a point on the punt, Bob. He got him inside the 10, and again, Rich Miller coming into today had gotten the ball inside the 27 times in 30 punts, and today I believe he's done it two or three times. He's been really successful at that. 25% inside the 20 is a pretty good ratio for a punter. Second down and seven after the three-yard gain. Lehigh now in the offset eye. Bucknell in a four-man front. Aylesworth back to pass. Aylesworth being pressured and knocked down on a leg whip by Russ Strohecker. Strohecker slid by him, lost his footing, and kind of just kicked his leg out at the last minute to knock Aylesworth down. Almost looked like somebody going into second base with a hook slide. Took him out on the play. Couldn't complete the double play. Wow, and it's now third down and 14 as the ball back on the five. Check some other Patriot League scores. Colgate 28 to nothing at the end of the third quarter over Fordham and Lafayette 14 to six over Holy Cross with 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Rick Hartzell, Bucknell's athletic director, hands us the note that Rob Gluss has hurt his ankle, but they expect him back. Third down now in 14. Aylesworth on a draw to Mastro Piero. He'll get across the five, maybe to the six or seven, but on third and 14, they'll gladly give up three. And Lehigh now will have to be the ones to punt out of their end zone. So the Bison, get a three and out, a good defensive stand after Miller puts the punt down inside the 10. We'll check some third quarter statistics for you momentarily. Lehigh with 263 yards total offense, but minus 40 yards on sacks going into the third quarter. They just lost another 10 on another sack that Bucknell had. They've really gotten killed there today. Pass rush for the Bison has been outstanding. Fourth down and 11. The Bison will have Mike Phillips stand at the Lehigh 40. And again, Talbot will be standing in his own end zone. Nice pass from center. Bucknell playing for the return. Talbot's kick is high, spiraling. Phillips will have to go back in his own territory, make the catch to Bucknell 46, from up the middle to the 50, to the 40. Ooh, almost broke it. And gets inside the 40 to the 37. Lance Eckenrode on the tackle for Lehigh. But the Bison will have it in excellent field position inside the Lehigh 40. 46-yard punt, but really outkicked his coverage that time. And Phillips did it all by himself because he had to run up the gut with brown jerseys all around. Him. His speed got him the extra yardage to get Bucknell outstanding field position. Bison with 244 yards of total offense today, but only 58 yards on the ground. 12 minutes and 54 seconds to go in the ball game. 21 to 14, Bucknell in front. A score of any kind here would look huge. Gluss back in the game at quarterback. Hands off to Bob Horst, who will be stood up after about a yard, yard and a half gain. He and Rich Owens kind of exchanging some pushes after the play was over. That's a lot of size colliding. Horst at six foot, 290. 18 pounds, Owens at 6'6", 255. Another late check on some scores. Colgate now 35 to nothing over Fordham, and Lafayette 14 to nine over Holy Cross. The Crusaders have closed that gap a little bit. That's what a minute 30 to go in the third quarter. With here, it's 12-23 and counting to go in the fourth. 21 to 14 in favor of Bucknell. Second and nine after the one yard run. Svensson now the tailback, McHugh is the fullback. Svensson's gonna throw the halfback option pass, throws it to Phillips, he catches it at the 10 and scores! Craig Svensson threw one pass last season, it was against Holy Cross for a touchdown. He throws one here, and it goes to Mike Phillips for the score, 36 yards. The reason that play worked, Bob, Lehigh had six men on the line of scrimmage right up front to rush the passer. When Bucknell pitched it wide, they were done for. They had nobody on the near side of the field in coverage besides the corner in one-on-one. -on -one. All Phillips had to do was get behind his man, and he did that. A perfect pass from Svensson. Bucknell play calling beautiful on that defensive set that Lehigh offered them. 27-14, Bucknell now by 13, trying to extend it to 14 as Rich Miller will have the... Uh, Extra point. Gloves to hold and snapping the ball is Herbert. The kick is up and the kick is good. We've got a break in the action with the score. It is Bucknell now 28, Lehigh 14. You're listening to Bucknell football on the Bison Sports Network. Now, okay. One, two, test one, two, three. One, two, three, I'll switch it back. Are we coming through? Test one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Huh? Oh, can you tell it's coming through? Okay, you want to try it again? Put it in game or put it in spots? 
So you wanted me to let it go the way we've been doing it? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. We do not have that play. The thing ran out. Okay. Just mark the ones you do have. Bucknell on top by two touchdowns, 28 to 14 over Lehigh, with 12 minutes and nine seconds to go in the third quarter. Excuse me, in the fourth quarter, Miller will kick off, and it's a high, fairly short kick. It is going to be fielded by Willie Davis on about the 10 to the right side. Across the 20, he'll get to the 24-yard line. Bob Horst, the first man to get to him. And Lehigh will have to go pretty much the length of the field to put in a score. I tell you what, on special teams, Brandon Little came down the field. Lehigh was setting up the wall in front, three guys to block for the return man. Little came down, knocked two of the guys down with a crushing hit. And that just opened it up for his other men to make the tackle. Very good job by Brandon Little on special teams coming downfield, opening it up for the other tacklers for Bucknell. Lehigh in a bit of a precarious position, down two touchdowns, but most of the fourth quarter still remains. Aylesworth back to pass, looking long right side, overthrows the man, intending it for Streeter on the right side. And last year, Chris, when Lehigh was down by a couple of scores, they panicked and turned the ball over a few more times. Lehigh, though, also has been known to come back with some passing. They did it against Yale to pull out the 36-32 win in which they were down going to the fourth quarter. Right here, it's 28-14 in favor of the Bison. Out of the shotgun, Aylesworth will throw it left side. Lafeer will drop it. No one within seven yards of him took his eye off the ball to see where Willie Jackson was, and Jackson closing on him would have made the tackle, but... Certainly would have been a big gainer on the play, and Lehigh now in a spot, third down and 10 from the 25. Lafeer's got to make that catch, Bob, but it was also a wounded duck. I think that Ellsworth might have been had it either tipped or had his arm hit just as he was letting go of the football because almost looks like somebody shot it in midair. Third down and 10 now for the Engineers. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Again, Ellsworth out of the shotgun. He's been using it more and more as the game has gone along. Bucknell will pass rush. Aylesworth is flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run left side, making the catch for the first down is Streeter. It'll be a pickup of about 18 yards on the play. Caught it in front of Jackson. It may not have been Streeter. It may have been Klingerman with the catch. Either way, it is a first down for the Engineers. Just a broken play, and all they've been doing is looking for the receivers. A couple of times it's paid off for Lehigh. The original routes have not been there, but secondary ones have been. Bison need to continue with the pass rush. They don't need to get soft here and allow balls to be completed in front of them. Aylesworth throwing on every down, throws it right side to LaFerre, makes a catch at midfield, gets inside the 40, knocked down by John Henry at the 33-yard line. Another huge gainer. No one within 10 yards of LaFerre. The coverage on that one on the 21-yard pickup, atrocious. Aylesworth had good time to throw there too, Bob, because Bucknell tried to spin a couple of its linemen trying to break off their blocks to the out side that gave Ellsworth some more time to me all that really does is give the quarterback more time you try and spin off him you're just breaking to the outside more you have more distance to run to get to him first and 10 now for the engineers at the 33 of Bucknell three receivers again getting set to go in the pattern Mastro Piero the lone back Bucknell now with a six-man front and it looks like they're going to blitz Aylesworth, and they do. Aylesworth back to pass, hit as he throws, and it's overthrown on the far sideline to Streeter. Crudup had coverage, but that incompletion directly contributed to the pass rush because he had no more time than he had to get the ball away. Ed Berman right in his face making the hit against Aylesworth. I tell you what, you have a couple of big guys like the Bison have on their defensive line coming at you. You better get rid of the football in a hurry. You're still going to take the hit. Second down now and 10 for the Engineers from the Bucknell 33-yard line. Again, three receivers. They'll go out of the shotgun. Bucknell this time with a four-man front. Aylesworth back to pass. 
being chased, being sacked. That time it's Pat Feely, and it'll be a 10-yard loss back to the Bucknell 44-yard line. Everybody's gotten into the act as far as the sacks go. Again, good coverage downfield, but that was really the pass rush that did it for Bucknell that time, picking up that sack. Everybody was downfield. Only one man was open across the middle, but by the time Ellsworth saw him, there was no chance he was going to be able to throw across his body, and Pat Feely was there to wrap him up in the backfield. We got five sacks now on Ellsworth as the Bison pass rush has been the key. It is now third down and 21 to go for a first down. Aylesworth out of the shotgun. Bucknell ahead by 14 points. Rush comes again. Lehigh does a nice job picking it up. Aylesworth throws it long left side. Double coverage and it's going to be incomplete and pass interference will be the call against Crudup. Streeter was trying to fight his way back from the ball and Crudup was in his way. And it'll be a pass interference call, automatic first down and 15 yards for Lehigh. To be honest, Ellsworth very lucky right now, Bob. They, the Bison came with the blitz again. This time it was picked up by the Lehigh offensive line. He threw down into double coverage where he had no business throwing the football. And the only reason that Lehigh may get some yardage out of this is that the pass interference was called, but I don't know if they are going to call it or not. First penalty against Bucknell. It'll come back to the line of scrimmage. Again, unlike pro football, it's not to the spot. It's only 15 yards. So the chains will move. Lehigh will have a first down now at the Bucknell 30, make it the Bucknell 29-yard line. Aylesworth can just thank the Bucknell defensive backs for that completion, Bob, or that yardage anyway, because there was no way he was going to get anything out of it. His offensive line picked up the blocks on the blitz, but he still shouldn't have thrown into double coverage. He had a man on the other side of the field who was open. He was probably actually benefited by the fact that his ball was underthrown because that allowed Crudup and the receiver, a streeter, to tangle each other up. First and 10 out of the shotgun. They hand off to Mastro Piero. He'll get maybe three. Welty, the first man to get to him from the linebacker spot, and it's second and seven coming up for the engineers. If you look at Bucknell on that play, you can see that they recognize right away it was a handoff. They haven't run out of the shotgun all afternoon, but when Mastro Piero lined up right next to the quarterback, a couple of the linebackers inched in looking for the run, and that's why they didn't get very much on it. 28 to 14, Bucknell in front, nine minutes and 43 seconds and counting to go in the ball game. Lehigh though inside the Bucknell 30, they have a second and seven out of the shotgun and Lehigh moved on the right side. It may have been Dan Gormsman that picked up a little bit early as Aylesworth could never get the playoff. Instead of second and seven, it'll now be second and 12. Illegal procedure, I believe the sixth penalty of the game against Lehigh. Bucknell again, the pass interference, their only penalty of the day. Three turnovers this afternoon for Lehigh, just one for Bucknell. 28 to 14, Bucknell is in front. Lehigh has not scored in the second half. Bucknell with a touchdown in each of the third and fourth quarters. Second and 12 for 13 to go for a first down. Aylesworth out of the shotgun. Aylesworth throws it long down the middle and Klingerman and Henry collide, but they're gonna say incidental contact. They may also say that the ball wasn't catchable as it sailed over the heads of both of them incomplete. And now Lehigh with a big third down and long and the Lehigh engineers were six of 11 in the first half on third downs. They're now nine of 17, so that means they are just three out of eight in the second half. Or three out of six, I guess it would be as I do my math. Bucknell going to the two deep zone on that pattern. It was a good call for the defense because Klingerman was cutting towards the center of the field. Lehigh had all their receivers with the exception of one to the inside. Third and 13, they need to get inside the 20 for the first down. Bucknell with a four-man rush. Aylesworth again out of the shotgun. Some linebackers will come. Aylesworth in the flat to LaFere makes a catch of the 30. Gets inside the 25 to the 23. They will not have the first down. Jackson, Henry, and Strohecker make the tackle. Down 14 points. Lehigh obviously has to be thinking about going for it on fourth down and throwing short of the first down marker basically indicated they were thinking two plays. Not even a hesitation on the part of Lehigh. Nobody even doubted that they were going to come off the field. That blitz opened up that short pattern for Lafere. Big play here for Bucknell. If they can shut him down, they can close this game out. 8.47 and counting to go in the game. Fourth and two and a half for the engineers. Three receivers, looks like a passing set. Aylesworth a roll to the right side, being chased by Jackson. Throws it long right side, and Henry's gonna be called for pass interference. Almost like a basketball play, he swatted the ball away on the block shot with one hand, and looked like he had the other hand on the stomach of Klingerman, it'll be called for the push off, and it'll be a 15 yard penalty, first down for the engineers. Good coverage by Henry. He did a good job to stay right in his face, and he looked up at the ball, batted it away. That's really a tough call. That's one of those 
deals where both guys are pushing each other a little bit and it is going to go against Bucknell for the pass interference. That's a tough call if you're the Bison to take right now because both of those guys are going at each other down near the goal line, obviously both going for the football, trying to gain position. It's more likely they're not going to be called on the defense more times, so. though. Lou Maranzana out on the field, giving the referees an earful on the play. The ball will be inside the 10 now at the 7. From this vantage point, it looked to me like Henry had the hand on the stomach of Klingerman, and probably a good call. And Chris, as you mentioned, any kind of contact seems to benefit the offense, not the defense in college football today. This is the 11th play of the drive for Lehigh. They're trying to come within one score. They're down 28-14. It is from the seven. Back to pass is Aylesworth being chased to the left side. He'll run and he'll get maybe to the six. Gain of one on the play. Second and goal from the six coming up for the engineers. Clock stopped, eight and a half minutes to go. Good thing that Bucknell came with the blitz on that play, Bob, because Ellsworth didn't have any time to plant and throw. He had Klingerman open on the crossing pattern over the middle in the end zone. Jaroshak into the game for Welty as Lehigh, is, as Bucknell expecting Lehigh to pass, has decided to go with the nickel. We haven't seen much of the nickel this afternoon. Kennedy to the right, Streeter to the left side. Klingerman also goes to the right. He's in the slot. That means Henry will have him man for man. And the lone back is Mastro Piero. Second and goal from the seven. Aylesworth rolls to the right, throws underneath to Klingerman, making the catch inside the one at the half yard line. John Henry, a second late, getting over to react. Both teams now go with the short yardage offense and defense, and Lehigh with a chance to pull within a score. Beautiful drive for the engineers, looking at play number, I guess, 13 right here. Clock running, 8.13 to go, still plenty of time left. Bison came from 27 to 9 down here four years ago in the rain in the fourth quarter. So we've seen some fantastic finishes in this series, especially at New Goodman Stadium. Double tight ends for Lehigh, third and goal from the half yard line. Aylesworth give it off to the back, and the back jumped too soon, and the ball came loose. Can Bucknell get their third turnover inside the 10? I don't think so. I think Lehigh will cover it, but now it'll be fourth and goal at the one. And Stillings, the running back, Chris, I think can be faulted for jumping on the dive just too soon. You know, Bob, on the fourth down stops that we've seen Bucknell do this year, they come up with the short yardage, big stops. Every time we've seen them fill the hole in a hurry. I think if you're Lehigh, you have to think about trying to run it to the outside. Not many teams have done that against Bucknell. They've tried to go inside. The linebackers are so quick for Bucknell, they shut it down in a hurry, end up getting in there for tackling the backs for a loss. This is a big play. Seven and a half minutes to go. Bucknell by two touchdowns. Fourth and one from the one for the score. Backs in an offset eye. Stillings the tailback. Aylesworth. Will roll to the left side. He's going to throw it underneath, making the catch is Mastro Piero. And they're unable to run it in against Bucknell, but they're able to throw it into the fullback out of the backfield, who was all alone. Very nicely designed play, the rollout. They flooded all the receivers to the left side. They had a lot of options, and Mastro Piero, the back, the last man to throw to, was open just over the line in the end zone because everybody else had to be accounted for for the Bucknell defense. Huge drive, Lehigh back in the ball game, and if Swartz can make the extra point, it'll be a seven point game. It's now 28 to 20. Bucknell leads by eight. Swartz, a right footed soccer style kicker, a transfer from the University of Miami of Florida. And we've got flags, and the play will not count. Somebody moved before the snap of the ball. If it's against Lehigh, it'll move it back five. If it's against Bucknell, it'll take it to the one and a half. And it's going to be a dead ball illegal procedure against Lehigh. So now it'll make it a little bit more difficult for Swartz here. And if he misses it, they can only tie it with a two-point conversion. Eleven plays on the drive for the engineers, and they converted. Well, they actually converted, says four third downs, but one of them was a fourth down. Actually, two of them might have been fourth downs. Thirteen plays, 75 yards on the drive. The engineers needing points and needing them badly there. And the kick by Swartz is up, it is good. So we've got a break in the action. Seven minutes and 16 seconds to go in the game. It is 28 for Bucknell, 21 for Lehigh. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. 4.53 is the time. Right? Yeah. Shut it down in a hurry. 
but a first down and goal at the three, able to correct them. Pop it back in on the side. Oh, that thing. Bob Buehler back along with Chris Carlin as the Bison now find their lead sliced to seven, 28 to 21, as Lehigh scores on a pass from Aylesworth to Mastro Piero. Last week after scoring, Lehigh went for an onside kick against New Hampshire, but not this time. High short kick, wide will field it on the 18, come across the 20 to the 25, and he'll get to the 28, a return of 10 for Troy White. And Bucknell right now needs to be able to move the football, Chris, and maybe get two scores back because the engineers with a very potent passing attack and still about half the fourth quarter left. I think if you're Bucknell, you want to try and drive the ball down the field, take some time off the clock, and maybe get a field goal attempt. You get inside maybe the 20-yard line, you give it a shot for Rich Miller. Otherwise, you just want to try and chew some clock here, Bob, pick up a few first downs, and not give the engineers a whole lot of time to work with when they get the ball back. Bucknell with a first and 10 at their own 28. The quarterback is Rob Gluss, fumbled the snap from center, but fell on it for a two yard loss. And that one nearly set Lehigh up. Bucknell in their comeback in that 27 to nine game that I mentioned, in which they were down going to the fourth quarter, had a similar play where they recovered a fumble by Kevin Kane at the Lehigh 30 at the right end of the stadium that really got them off and running in their fourth quarter comeback. Second down and 11 after the one yard loss. Backs in an eye, McHugh in front of Lemon. Gluss looking over a four man front. Gluss will roll to the right side. Gluss will throw it out in the flat. McHugh makes the catch, the 30. Comes across the 35 to the 37. He'll be just short of a first down. Bucknell have to convert a third and one. The two other Patriot League scorers, Lafayette has extended its lead. It's now 17 to nine over Holy Cross. And with 10.24 to go in the fourth quarter, Colgate continues to dominate Fordham 35 to nothing with just under five minutes left to go in the game. Of course, Bucknell next week will be home for their parents' weekend against the Lafayette Leopards. And as we look at uh, Lehigh's schedule, Lehigh next week, they will be going to play Colgate, and that game will also be here. It's the first of three in a row at home for Lehigh. Bucknell after today will have three of the final four games at home and the sticks brought out again. It seems like every time there's been a measurement, it's been over here on this side of the field. They've had to bring the, bring the sticks across and again, it's short. I didn't even think it was close enough to measure, Chris. We haven't thought that most of the times today. It'll be about a yard short. And a very crucial third down for the Bison this afternoon on third downs. Bucknell is three out of nine. I think if you're Bucknell right now, you go to where your bread and butter play, Bob, and that's been running to the right side, even though it's the short side today. You just need to get less than a yard to pick up the first down. I'd run right behind Defal Fratarelli and DeFalco. DeFalco, 6'4", 270. Fratarelli, 6'4", 273. And they'll have to go against Dina at 280 and Owens at 255 if that's the way they choose to run. In the game now at center, it is Scott Lennox. He's over the ball. It's a toss left side to Lemon, the wide side. He's going to get a block from McHugh around the corner. 40, 50, into the secondary. 40, he's going to get bumped out of bounds at the Lehigh 38-yard line. And a huge run on third down and a yard for Lemon. That time, 23 yards and... That's kind of the play I think you were talking about Lehigh running down around the goal line, Chris, because when you get people stacked up in the middle, you can spring somebody to the outside sometimes. And when you have a guy with, like Rich Lemon with his great speed, he can break it to the outside and turn the corner in a hurry. If you don't have somebody right there in his face, you're in trouble. That's what happened to Lehigh in that play. Good call by the Bison Brain Trust. Only the fourth third down conversion of the game for Bucknell, but it was huge. Phillips and Nopum to the right. Tight end Gentilly on the left, backs in an eye. Lemon will carry again, this time in the middle of the field. Will get maybe a yard. Appear to be linebacker Greg Amon on the tackle for Lehigh. And it's second down and nine coming up for the Bison. Clock continuing to run and it's now a factor as when the next snap of the ball occurs, there'll be less than six minutes to go in the game. Bison shuttling in some fresh people on offense. 
The offensive line, as we mentioned, DeFalco, Fratterelli on the right side. The left side, Donkers and Gay. Gary Petros is not in the game at center. Scott Lennox is in there, so I don't know if Gary had been shaken up. He had a very good block on one of the screen passes to Lemon. They toss it left side to the short side on second and 10. Lemon breaks a couple of tackles and somehow skirts his way down the sideline to the 30-yard line and will lead Bucknell with a very workable third and about two to go for a first down. You know, Rich Lemon, not a big guy at all. 5'8", 161, but if you try and tackle him in his upper body, you're gonna be in trouble. Lehigh tried to do that to Rich Lemon right there, and he busted it for some more yardage, getting around to the outside. He did a nice job to pick up the extra yardage for Bucknell. How about these numbers for Lemon? 21 carries for 106 yards. He now has 13 100-yard games, and now 11 in a row. He also has three catches, 39 yards there, and also one was a touchdown. Hand off to the fullback. McHugh will get the first down on third and two. McHugh gets three, maybe four over the left side, following Donkers and Gay. And the chains will move with 5.29 to go now in the fourth quarter. This is exactly what we talked about Bucknell wanting to do on this drive, Bob. Take some time off the clock and get down deep into Lehigh territory. If they don't pick up a touchdown here, at least go for the field goal and pick up the extra score to make it a two-score game. 5.18, 5.17, 5.16. First and 10 now for the Bison at the Lehigh 27-yard line. To the left side goes White. To the right side, Noteboom. McHugh now in front of Svensson in the backfield, or maybe that's Horst. It's going to be a toss to Horst. Horst left side, runs into his own blocker, Donkers, but bounces off of him and gets inside the 20, close to the 17, and very close to another first down. How tough is Bob Horst? Ran into his own blocker pretty hard, too. Wasn't anything that was real, really a light hitter, just kind of tapped into him, ran into him hard, bounced off him, and then ran over the man who gets credited for the tackle, but actually he gets tackled. That's John Slowick, the linebacker. Horace got the better of that battle between those two. And slow to get up is the cornerback, Hector Martinez, who was just leveled. I don't know if it was Horace getting him as he's going by or whether uh, it was uh, one of the other blockers, maybe Donkers or Gay on the left side that knocked him down. Tahir Rivers is gonna come in for him on this play. And Bucknell will have a second down now and about one to go for a first down. With 4.51 to go, we'll see what kind of a riverboat gambler Lou Maranzana and company are here. This might not be a bad time to go with a play fake and throw for the end zone right here because you've got second and less than a yard to go for a first down. I don't believe they've thrown on this drive. It's been all running the football so far, and you can tell where the offensive line of, of Bucknell has really worn down the Lehigh defensive front here in the second half. We saw it early in the third quarter when they were picking up some big chunks of yardage. Rich Lemon did not have a whole lot of yards at halftime, and now he's got 106. I think that tells you exactly how they've been doing the job here in the second half of getting the big push against Lehigh. I also think, Chris, that uh, Bucknell may think better and not be as much of a gambling team as, as I would suggest right there. They've been running the ball good. Why put the ball in the air would be the other side of the coin. I think with a second and short here, it doesn't hurt to take a shot, but if you're Bucknell with a touchdown lead, I think you go ahead and run it up the gut, just try and pick up the first down. And if not run it up the gut, just run the football because it's been working so very well for you. You have to credit your offensive linemen, and you continue to show confidence in, you, in them if you run the football. And now Martinez is being helped to his feet, and they're going to carry him off the field. And it may be a knee injury to Martinez. And he's not going to be able to do anything. They're going to pick him up and carry him completely off the field. And he's going to get a nice hand from the over 13,000. Both Bucknell and Lehigh fans applaud for Martinez, a senior who was a two-year starter. In fact, one of only four of the seniors on this team that was able to letter as a freshman. So he has been a player all four years for Lehigh. And... As uh, Chris mentioned, Tahir Rivers is in the ball game for him. He's a sophomore. We've seen him on kick returns, but not playing much in the secondary. Rivers, one of only two freshmen to let her last season for Lehigh. Zabelski's in the, in the game for Bucknell here, so you might want to think that they're going to either run it or run a little play fake and maybe try and get it to him. Double tight ends, backs in an eye, McHugh in front of Horst, the heavy set in there now. Horst will have the first down, spinning inside the 15, driving inside the 10, down to the 9. And that was just huge blocking by the offensive line up front. 
No prisoners were taken on that play. And then Horst carries about five more yards inside the 10 to the 9. I love that setup with Horst at the tailback slot and then McHugh in front of him at fullback. What a great tandem that is and what great size Bucknell has in the backfield when they go to that. You can almost tell they're going to run up the gut every time that set comes out. And not much you can do about stopping it either. Down to 4.05 and counting to go in the game. 28-21 Bucknell. They have a first and goal at the Lehigh 9. They continue with double tight ends. Backs in an eye. Tossed to Horst. Fumbles the pitch. He'll pick it up and then get up and try to run with it. And he'll lose yardage back to the 17. So it's a loss of eight on the play. And Horst never really had the ball. I don't know whether he took his eye off it to look up field, maybe to follow him, the Q block or what. But now the Bison in a little bit of trouble. They have a second and goal back on the 16. 3.35 to go. Do you want to put the ball in the air to pass the ball, or are you willing to be content to run the ball from here and maybe have to settle for a field goal try? I think they might put it in the air because they just brought in Noteboom and Phillips, and they're going to split out wide to the left. Coming out of the huddle, the Bison. It is second down and goal from the 16. Gluss hands off to Horst. Horst will get one to the 15, and that's it. And now it's third down and goal. The ball is on the right hash mark. So if they're going to set up for a field goal here, Chris, one would expect them to run the ball to the left here. Again, 17-9 Lafayette over Holy Cross and 35-0 Colgate over Fordham. Both of those games late in the fourth quarter. Lehigh shuttling some fresh legs in defensively. Tony Perez coming in in the defensive line. And I think Bucknell's going to let the clock run down. They're going to ask it to run all the way down to one and then call their timeout. And they're going to spend the timeout. Very, very heads up move time management wise by the Bison. They'll take it with 2.31 to go. They use their first timeout. We're going to keep it here as the Bison look at a third down and goal from the 15 because we don't want to have a chance at missing anything here. Bucknell has held the ball now for almost five minutes. And they have run 10 plays on this drive. And Chris, it has been what the doctor has ordered after Lehigh had a nice scoring drive to cut the game to seven. They've run 10 plays and they've all been runs. They have not thrown the football on this drive. Let's give you some other out of town scores. We have Florida State 17 to nothing over Clemson. That's a final. Boston College and Rutgers finishing a 7-7 tie. That's a bit of a surprise. And Miami blowing out West Virginia 38 to six. Lehigh defense huddled in mass with Kevin Higgins, the head coach. And now they come back onto the field. Bucknell's offense is on the field. Only Rob Gluss strolled over to talk with Lou Maranzana and Mike O'Connor. Third down and goal at the 15. We'll see if they try to throw the ball or whether they try to run the ball maybe towards the middle of the field and set up the field goal attempt for Miller. Interesting call here, Chris. I think they're going to throw the football. It's going to be Lemon the tailback, McHugh the fullback. White to the left, note boom to the right. The tight end is Zabelski on the left side. Gluss the quarterback, tossing left side to Lemon. Lemon trying to follow a Zabelski block. Flags are down. It's probably going to be a hold. If Bucknell is given another down, it'll move it back 10 yards. Now another flag falls. Don't know if somebody got called for a late hit or not. But well, there'll be at least one and maybe two penalties. Bucknell, the first one is certainly there. It's a holding call. And if you're Lehigh, the question is, do you want him to let him try the field goal from there, or do you want to move him back 10 yards? And I think that uh, with Miller not showing a whole lot of range, I think you've got to move him back 10 yards. I think so, too. If you're Bucknell, then when you get the ball back here on third down, you definitely have to put the ball in the air and get it a little bit closer. No, Nothing risky. You don't have to go for the end zone. Maybe you try and chip away and get 10 more yards though, on an underneath route or uh, maybe hitting a running back out in the flat. If Lehigh takes the play, the ball will be at the 14-yard line. That'll be about a 31-yard attempt. It would be from the left hash mark because Lemon's run went outside of the hash. And it appears that Lehigh is going to take the penalty. But that does give Bucknell really two more downs to work with. Miller this year is two out of five on field goals. Both of his field goals have come from 30 to 39 yards. He's 0 for 2 from inside or from 20 to 29 yards. I don't think the Bison would attempt a field goal from here. The ball is out to the 27 yard line. The snap would probably be about the 35 to be about a 45 yard attempt. I don't think Miller's capable of that. And Lehigh Lee is gonna call a timeout on defense here. And uh, they're down to one timeout left. As I guess they feel they need a defensive stop here. Of course, when they accepted the penalty, I think that since it was a run inbounds, the clock would have been running 
So the clock would have started again against Lehigh. We have two minutes and 24 seconds to go. It's 28 for Bucknell, 21 for Lehigh. Lehigh with one timeout left, Bucknell with two. And the Bison have the ball back on the 27. The whole thing, as far as moving the ball back, set up by an errant pitch out to Gluss and Horst that was not really handled well on either end. Bob will give you some Ivy League scores going on now. Two Penn beat Brown 24 to nothing. Cornell trailing Dartmouth 14 to 10, 9.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Princeton 10, Harvard 7, 7.50 left in the fourth. And how about this one? Columbia all over Yale 30 to 9, less than five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. I think last week Columbia played Penn and didn't allow a touchdown and losing 12 to 3. Third down now coming up for the Bison and goal at the Lehigh 27. McHugh in front of Lemon. Both receivers wide to the right. That's wide and notebook. Gluss rolls to the right side. He may run it. Gluss at the 30 will throw it. Throw it to White in and out of his hands. The 10, it's incomplete. Gluss had some room to run. Wouldn't have had the first down. But by having an incomplete pass, Lehigh does not have to use their last time out. I tell you what, Steve Noteboom was open for a moment or so down the field. He had only the free safety, Jason Mack, on him. If you get a free safety against Steve Noteboom, you've got to try and throw him the football especially a guy with Mac, He's not great size, he's at 6'1", and Noteboom at 6'3". If you try and just lob that one up in the air, I think Noteboom's gonna have the better shot. Bucknell is gonna attempt a field goal. Left hash mark, it'll be 44 yards for Rich Miller. 38 is his career long. Nice snap, nice hold. Miller's kick is up, it's long enough. It is good enough! A 44 yard field goal by Rich Miller with 2.13 to go, and the Bison lead by 10. 31-21, what an afternoon for Mr. Miller. Miller hoarded by his teammates on the side of the field. What a great job by Rich Miller. He just came up and boomed that kick, hammered it through the uprights. Rich Miller, his career long of 44 yards, and that score right there very well have, have done may have done in the Lehigh Engineers this afternoon. Lehigh with one timeout, 2-13 remaining in the football game. They're gonna get the football back but they're gonna have to score twice. We've seen it happen a couple of times this season, but the Bison able to connect on the 44 yard field goal. That one would have been good from at least five or six more yards. What a great job of clock management by Bucknell too. 12 plays, they only went 45 yards after all was said and done, but five minutes and three seconds off the clock capped off by the Miller 44 yard field goal. Score now 31-21 in favor of Bucknell. And Rich Miller has never had a more important kick. I don't think he's ever tried a longer field goal than that, Chris. I think he missed a 45 yarder earlier in the season that might have been partially blocked. What a kick by Miller. He has the ball teed up on the 35 yard line. Davis and Rivers back to return it at the five. And Miller runs up and kicks it. It's a high end over end kick. Davis will take it on the 12. Come up to the 15, to the 20. Outside of the 25, run out of bounds of the 26 by Terrence Parham. And Lehigh will have to score twice, 2.07 left, and just one timeout remaining. First, you look back for Lehigh, the timeout that they had to spend at the very beginning of the second half looks very big right now. And now the one they had to take on defense a moment ago with only one timeout left and 2.07, their guys are going to have to get out of bounds. Aylesworth out of the shotgun, three wide receivers, one running back. Nice pass from center. Bucknell with a four-man rush. Aylesworth steps up in the pocket. Hit as he throws, and it's overthrown, incomplete. Somebody laid the wood to Bob Aylesworth there. It may have been Russ Strohecker. But it was within the legal bound, the one step, and boom. And Aylesworth passed way too long. Second and 10 coming up for the engineers. Exactly two minutes to go. Bison have been able to rush Aylesworth this afternoon. Ekstrom and Klingerman wide to the left side, Streeter to the right, Aylesworth again out of the shotgun to Bucknell Bison again in a four-man rush. Now Strohecker kind of acting as a spy coming in, and another hit causes an incompletion. The pass intended for the tight end Lafere at the 30-yard line. Rob Bird got to him exactly at the time of the ball and knocked the ball loose, and it's incomplete, and all of a sudden Lehigh 
time not even a factor. They need downs right now. They've got a third and 10 from their own 26. You know, Lafier made a great catch for the touchdown in the first score of this game, Bob. But since then, he's had the dropsies. He's dropped about four passes this afternoon that should have gone for some yardage for Lehigh. It is now third down and 10 for the Engineers. They need to get to their own 36 to keep things going without having to go to fourth down. Aylesworth back to pass, flushed out of the pocket. Aylesworth throws over the middle. Streeter catches it for the first down in front of Todd at the 39 of Bucknell. So it'll be a pickup of 13, and the chains will move with 145 left to go in the football game. First and 10 with a minute 45 remaining. Bison defense has forced three turnovers this afternoon. They've only committed one themselves. Aylesworth on first and 10, throwing over the middle. Klingerman makes the catch in traffic. A pickup of eight, but the clock will run. The ball to the 48 of Lehigh. And the engineers will go without a huddle with a minute and a half remaining. And the officials will stop the clock momentarily to reset something. I'm surprised that they would whistle the clock to stop, but they did. Aylesworth out of shotgun, getting the pass from center. Now being flushed out of the pocket, throws it left side and overthrows Mastro Piero at the 47. Jeroshak had coverage, but the rush forced Aylesworth to throw it before he wanted. Clock stops with 1.16 left. You know, Bucknell with their defensive front is very rarely today run stunts, Bob, but when they have, they've gotten some real good pressure. I think that they've been staying away from it just to cross up Lehigh a little bit. They've been doing that all afternoon. We said before the game, you'd see a lot of look, different looks on the defense from the linebackers and defensive linemen. It's been very successful from Bucknell today. Third down and two now for Lehigh. They need to get to midfield for the first down. Aylesworth rolls to the left, being chased by Berman, hit as he throws, and the ball will be caught downfield at the Bucknell 30 five inside the 35 to the 33 streeter with the catch and the engineers convert a huge third down first and 10 lehigh at the 33 and now the clock will stop because the chains were not ready to go and the lehigh chain crew helping them out by taking their <laughs> sweet time moving downfield you talk about your homer chain crews <laughs> wow they were moving very slow Bucknell by 10, 31, 21, 57 seconds left, and Aylesworth will be sacked by Pat Feely and Ed Berman, and now they're going to have to spend their final timeout, and they are out of timeouts. We're going to take it with them. 52 seconds to go, 31, 21, Bucknell. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Is it close? It was like 107, right? Something like that. Second down and seventh of all the 19 as they. Um, before we do the stats after the game, can you just check it with them? Yeah. Okay. So down the field, he had only the free safety chase. In the air, I think Note Group's going to have the better shot. Bucknell is going to attempt to pop that one up in the air. I think Note Group's going to have the better shot. Well, we've got five things here, Chris. All together? Yeah. Okay. They're the ones Mark with the, the ones X's. that we have. They're all the ones with the X's. Okay. Lehigh now with a second down and 14 as they come back to action, trailing 31-21. They're out of timeouts, 50 seconds left. Aylesworth throws to the sidelines and making the catch is Streeter at the 24-yard line. He'll be a yard short of the first down. It should be a second down and one coming up. The chain crew once again confused, excited, trying to move for the first down, but now it is third and one, and the engineers assuredly, Chris, are going to have to pass to the sidelines with 47 seconds left. They need two scores, and they're out of timeouts. Well, it's something that Bucknell gave them earlier today. They'll continue to give it to them now. The pass on the outside, five and six yard routes to the sidelines. Third down and one out of the shotgun. Aylesworth is being rushed. Throws it over the middle, making the catch for the first down is Klingerman. Clock stops with 42 seconds to go. They're inside the 20 at the 17. The clock will stop until the chains get set. And Lehigh comes flying down the field. They've got another first and 10, but only 42 seconds left. No timeouts. 
Aylesworth will roll to the right side, getting the pass from center out of the shotgun. Aylesworth throws for the end zone. It's tipped by Jackson and nearly intercepted by Henry. Incomplete. The clock stops with 31 seconds left. Willie Jackson was reading the eyes of Aylesworth all the way, Bob. He's he was licking his chops when that ball was thrown because he knew it was coming his way. All he had to do was step in front, but because Ellsworth threw it a little bit high, Jackson ends up just tipping it. Ellsworth actually making a bad throw, and it really behooves him. John Henry slow to get to his feet. The Bucknell staff out there to attend to him. Bison catch a break that it was incomplete and the clock was stopped anyway, so the injury would not stop the clock and benefit Lehigh. 31 seconds left. Henry has come out of the game because of the clock stopping, and I think Jim Jaroshak is now in there at the strong safety. In college football, the sacks go against the rushing yards, and to give you an idea what the defensive front for Bucknell has done today, 12 net yards rushing for Lehigh today, mostly because of six Bucknell sacks. Well, Lehigh still hasn't been able to run the ball much anyway, even with the sacks. 31 seconds left in the game, Bucknell 31, Lehigh 21. Second and 10 from the Bucknell 17. Aylesworth out of the shotgun, five-man rush. Aylesworth cannot take a sack. He's hit as he throws, it's incomplete. I would have thought they could have got him for grounding. The Bucknell coaching staff yelling for grounding. Now a flag is down. Did they finally agree that the grounding should be called? It's got to be. There was nobody in the area, nobody and, who even resembled a receiver. And it's about time, the seven-second delay call on the grounding. And that'll be five yards from where Aylesworth threw it. And I believe it's treated like a sack, so I think the clock will run once they get it reset. We'll see. Down to 25 seconds to go. The down will be lost five yards from where the sack was, so it'll now go to third down. And I think they should run the clock because I think it should be treated like a sack. We'll see if they wind it. They've set the ball on the left hash mark. The clock is still stopped. And watch the referee. We'll see if he starts to wind the clock when they get to the line of scrimmage. Maybe Lehigh will catch a break. Nope, they don't wind the clock. I thought they should. Aylesworth will get a high pass from center, able to save it somehow. Russ Strohecker chases at him. Aylesworth throws it for the end zone. He's got Klingerman there for the score. No, it is not Klingerman. It is Ekstrom. Eric Ekstrom will catch the pass. A floater down the middle with 19 seconds to go. And Lehigh now is on the board. It's 31-27, and they will go for two. Ekstrom did a good job, Bob, to break to the inside. He looked like he was going to bust it outside, did a little stutter step, then cut inside, got the extra step that he needed on his man, and a good throw by Aylesworth to get it to him. 34 yards on the pass play, coming with 19 seconds to go. And they'll go for two, and now Bucknell defensively is going to call a timeout because this will be able to decide it whether Lehigh could win the game on a field goal if they get the onside kick or whether they'd be forced to go for a touchdown. We have the drive yardage, 11 plays, 74 yards in just a minute 53. And Bucknell right now on top 20, excuse me, 31 to 27. Just a typical Bucknell-Lehigh game, Chris. I know this is your first one, but every time we come down to Goodman Stadium, this is the kind of game we get. Not the kind of weather we get, but the kind of game we get. Well, I tell you what, the fans, all 13,000 of them, have definitely gotten their money's worth this afternoon. Some of them had left early after the field goal by Bucknell, and how big does that look now for Rich Miller connecting on that 44-yarder? Because if not, Lehigh would be going for the win here with 19 seconds to go if the field goal had been missed and they had come down the field here. 19 seconds to go. Lehigh is out of timeouts. Bucknell now with one left. Great football game here this afternoon. Bison trying to go to 4-3 and three overall, but more importantly, 1-0 and in the Patriot League. Lehigh has already won a game against Fordham in the league, so they're 1-0 and coming into this one. Ball on the left hash mark from the three. Aylesworth will roll to the right side. Aylesworth now looking to throw back to the left side, and the ball is going to be intercepted and dropped. Either way, it's incomplete, and the point after is no good, so the pass will fail. Almost like a misdirection screen that they were trying to run, Bob. They flooded everybody to the right side with the exception of one receiver. Very similar to the touchdown that we saw that Rich Lemon scored earlier today when only he and Brian Gay were left on the left side of the field when everybody rolled right. They just turned around and threw it the opposite way. Well, it's now 31-27. That means Lehigh will need the onside kick, and they will also need to score a touchdown because a field goal does them no good now. Swartz is going to tee the ball up to the 
near the right hash mark, not totally over to the right side. And I believe this year you must keep several people on the one side of the kicker. They've changed the rules. You can't have everybody on the side of the kicker. I believe you must keep three or so on the right side of the kicker. And Bucknell's brought their hands team out again. You look up front, you have Svensson and Gentili in the front line, along with Proputnik, Mike Phillips, and on the far side, Steve Noteboom. The, the next group is Jaroshak, Sikowski. Uh, in the middle might be David Todd, and then you got White and Noteboom, or make it White and McHugh on this side. And with 19 seconds to go and no timeouts, I think there's no way they're kicking this one deep. Because Princeton and Cornell were able to kick deep and get the ball back, but they both had about two minutes with which to work. They've got 19 seconds and no timeouts. The onside kick with the side whether Lehigh has a chance or not. Swartz kicks it. They're going to get the high bounce. It's in the air, but it doesn't go the 10 yards. And it's going to be down at the 38-yard line. Bucknell will opt to take it right there. And he got the high bounce, but it took a left turn and then peeled back. And Bucknell's going to have the ball and only has to fall on it once. Good and job. the game will be theirs. Well, it was a good job by the hands team not to come up and try and come up with it too soon. And they really got a break when that ball just hooked left all of a sudden. On the, th on the second bounce, it was a high one, but it didn't go over the line. That is so very big for Bucknell right now, and that'll do it. The Bison will just have to take the knee once, and the Bison will go to 4-3 and three and 1-0 and oh in the Patriot League. For Lehigh, they will fall to 3-3-1 three, three and 1-1 one, and one and one in the Patriot League, and the Bison will have the inside track to try to claim their first ever Patriot League championship. The center is Lennox. Gluss gets the snap, takes the knee, and this ball game is over. 15 seconds to go. Bucknell does not have to snap it. They are 3-1 and one now in history here at Goodman Stadium. They'll mark the ball for play. Five, four, three, two, one. And it is over. The Bison, thanks to a long 44-yard field goal by Rich Miller, are able to hold on and win it. 31 to 27. The Bison scored 10 points in the fourth quarter. Lehigh's only points come on the pass with 19 seconds to go. Aylesworth to Ekstrom. And Bucknell wins by four. And we have, if we had player of the games today, Bob, I think you have to give it to the entire defensive front for Bucknell. Six sacks today. What they wanted to do was get pressure on Ellsworth and force him into mistakes. They did exactly that. And also Rich Miller with a big 44-yard field goal.